Hello, fiends, and welcome to the Monster Party Podcast, now a part of the Fangoria Podcast Network. For more information about the network, including other programs, how to follow the show, and find past episodes of Monster Party, please visit Fangoria.com. And now, it's party time. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of Monster Party. Monster Monster Party! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. How do you like that extra Monster Party laugh? Yeah. Oh, boy, that we did have a little extra, didn't we? Yeah. That's and, what actors do. How do you like that? <laughs> oh, We're my gosh. We're already off to a great start. We are, because because our guest is on fire, but tell us, who are you, sir? I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And I'm Lisa Langlois. Yeah! There you go! <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, you so much for being you, here. You heard uh, this is a riot. Hey. And oh. I grew up with four older brothers, so I'm at home. <laughs> wow. None as dorky as this, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> no, Should... I heard that the term was hardened nerds. Hardened yes. nerds. Take that it's however you want. It's hard to pronounce, like but I love it. However we... you want to take that is know, fine. We are so thrilled to have you here. And, and Sean, maybe you could tell us a little bit about our Lisa, guest. Um, I mean, Lisa, Lisa's... Yes, tell me about very... me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear who I am. An extremely accomplished actress mm. in, who's done so many different types of movies, but also for our Monster Party listeners, has done a number of very interesting and really yeah. awesome <laughs> genre films, yeah, sci-fi love and horror stuff, and she is a standout in all of them, and we just have been itching to get her on the show oh, to yeah. talk about uh, her career. I've in, been scratching. In horror and sci-fi. <laughs> um, I'm still yeah. itching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what Claude Chabrol would have said <laughs> seen in these movies. Speaking of which. I She's working. Uh, in your, early in your career, Lisa, you were in commercials, I think, first, right? And then yeah, you know, what happened is I needed a way to pay my way through university. Is that how you got into the whole thing? You said, uh, yeah, hey, I, I, fe- I, I felt, you know, secretly, I always wanted to be an actor. Uh-huh. And, you know, I'd be in plays at school and everything else. And, you know, and then I, I would get involved with, you know, the variety shows at school. And I was in the drama club. And secretly, I always oh. wanted to be that. And my mother, mm-hmm. um, you know, we grew up, my mother was a single mother. We had five kids and all five of us had one bedroom. And, and oh, a border. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then when my, my brother turned 16, he got a job. So my mother and my brother bought this house. And so in we the way that we afforded the house is my mother rented out all the bedrooms to Chinese students who were going to the local university. And we all slept on mattresses in the basement. Oh. <laughs> and, wow. I, and, and I Sounds revealed like to one of the Chinese students that I secretly, I really wanted to be an actor. And uh, he said, you know, and I, I think I misinterpreted it, but I think he meant statistically and financially. But he said that they've done studies and actors are <laughs> next to paupers. <laughs> oh, and that's done what studies. stayed. That, that, yeah, that's that. that I, he meant, you know, I can't, don't quote me, but so that stayed with me. So I never, I was like, you know, in the closet about wanting to be an actor and was in taking the dance classes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened is I had this dance teacher who said, you know, you should do commercials. And I'm thinking, I said, how, how do I do commercials? She said, you get some photographs and you take them down to, to try. Toronto and you get an agent. And I'd had like these student photographers take pictures of me, you know, because you're walking around the street and they have to yeah. do their, their homework and so mm-hmm. they took pictures of me. So I called up one of them and I mm-hmm. said, can, can you submit my pictures to, a, to an agency? And so he... Um, Sent them to this one agency and they took me on and it was like Broadway Danny Rose. Really? It was like you know, and they were so mean to me. It they was they like, were mean. They were yeah, just like, and just... I never went out for six months. I was <gasps> with them, and then one wow. day I get this phone call from this agency called the Talent Agency, uh, ta- uh, the Characters, and they were like the CAA of Canada. And I went in. It was this <laughs> sprancy, you know, agency, and they're really nice to me. And and I just thought. I have no qualms leaving these other people who are mean to me. So I started doing commercials and I, I, I wasn't thinking of acting at all. I just wanted to, you know, I was either going to go into journalism. I was accepted yeah. at the Ryerson School of Journalism or I was going to be an interpreter for the government or I was going to be an, uh, an attorney. Wow. Because so, you, you can speak like fluent French. French. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I speak fluent French. Yeah, yeah well, well, well I, was, I actually wanted, say it in French. I wanted to hear you say <laughs> your, something. Your hand out I, there. Well, I wanted French. to hear you say no, something. No, next you're going to say, do you speak 
French yeah. or do you speak French French? That's what people say. All no, time. really, no, what's no, no, French no. French? I want to know what that is. No, <laughs> no, no. Or they'll go, "Do you speak Canadian French right. or do you speak right. French French?" And oh. I want to go ballistic and strangle them. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Be, because <laughs> I, I finally, I, I finally cut it down to I speak Brooklyn French. Okay, oh. <laughs> because it, it's like you know, it's like saying to somebody, "Do you speak English or do you speak English English?" Mm. And the difference <gasps> is like. You know, in France, it's like having an Eng- uh, you know an English accent, and mm-hmm. then like there's an American accent, just yeah. like the right. French Canadian accent, and we can all do the other accents if you're an actor or yeah. anybody else. It's just like learning a Texan accent. Or, I see. You it's know, so nitpicky, course. though. You know, it's oh, like it just makes me. I just want to strangle them, and it's, it's the people that are unilingual who say that. Oh, but the, <laughs> like, can you get me to a restaurant or a cab? But That's the all point, I need. But the point here is, is that she's bilingual. Yes. Okay. All right. I think we've, right. I think we've established right. that. So, so. so anyway, I, I like booked eight national commercials in like six months. Wow. And and then, so my first break is I go to this uh, audition for a movie of the week starring H- Henry Fonda. Mm. And oh, and I'd wow. never auditioned for anything in my life. Man. And so they gave me the script and I thought, okay, I guess I should just read this out loud like when I'm reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> so... I read it like that way and I got called back and I just what? went to the very end and at the very end of the audition process after, you know, an, an, another couple of callbacks, the producer said, look, you're really the best reader, but we really want a real 14 year old and you're 18. You know what? I could care less. I was going to university. That's yeah. what I wanted to, you know. So, <clears throat> so then what happened is a couple of weeks later, I get this other audition and closed your roles in town. I had no idea who he was. Yeah. And my agent, the casting director wouldn't see me. Because she said, at least it's only done commercials. Mm-hmm. So this casting director wanted to see one of my agent's other clients who was more established, but for a small role. And he said, he's not going in for that role. Yeah. And she said, please, we, you know, he's already right for it. We really like to see him. And he said, tell you what. I'll send him in for that role if you agree to see Lisa Langlois. Oh, wow. Talk, and this about, is, a, talk it, about a dealer. Yeah. yeah. That, that's an agent. Yeah. yeah. Clutch role. I mean, this is an esteemed French director. He's new wave, called, like, French, French new wave, French great. Talk. Nouvelle vague. Yeah. Right? <laughs> is that, is that As new they French? As they say in, in, in French French. That's French French. Okay. <laughs> so, so I go in. I have no idea who I'm meeting. And uh, there was... There was a producer and yeah. she closed her role, and we're t- we we start talking, mm-hmm. and I tell him I can speak French, and he he doesn't really pay attention. Doesn't and then, care, okay. And does it, or he I don't know maybe he they're used to actors lying because they all yeah. say yes I can I, I can ride a horse <laughs> right, right. Right. I, can I do trapeze yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the interview he turns to the producer and he says. In French, I, I think this is the best girl we've seen. And I'm thinking, I just told him that I speak French. <laughs> <laughs> and he's telling her that I'm the best one they've seen. Wow. wow. So then he turns back to me and he says to me in English, you're the best one we've seen. <laughs> 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 and he said, but, he goes, I, I got to talk to the producers, but you'll know in a couple days. So, okay, fine. And I said, but don't you want me to read? Yeah. And you see, Establish great directors, or more, I, I should say, European directors. They they don't make you read. They just meet with you. They know you can act. They get a feeling about you. And the thing about America, what I've noticed is they they read you into the ground. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. like so many mm-hmm. callbacks and they, and shoots, and it goes on forever. And these other guys, they just meet you, and they know. Mm-hmm. They go with their instincts. And so uh, he said, "You want to read?" Picks up the script, hands it to me, goes read. So I opened it up, yeah. and I opened up to a page where it's a voiceover. Mm-hmm. It's a voiceover. Yeah. And I read the voiceover, and he goes, okay. <laughs> and it was the days before, remember when they didn't have answering machines? Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you, you had to you tell people, I'm going to be there at a certain time? Yeah. So I went, my parents were divorced. I went up to see my dad, and there was something that was telling me I, bet, I better get back, and he was like living about 200 miles away from mm-hmm. where I live with my mom. And I said, you know, I'm getting out of shape. I got to get dad. I got to get back to my dance class. And I came home. It was like 8 o'clock in the morning, and the phone was ringing. Uh-huh. And I picked it up, and it was my agent. He goes, where have you been? He said, they want you in Montreal today to shoot this movie. <gasps> And what Today. had happened is, Claude Chabrol, like, they, they, the producers wanted a name. And so Claude Chabrol, or Claude Chabrol, ah, mm, he wanted friend. Jodie Foster. Oh. He always wanted to work Not with familiar. her. I always wanted oh. to be Jodie Foster. <laughs> Jodie Foster! I always no, wanted I... to be Jodie Foster. Yeah. And then, and she was doing another French film, Moi Fleur Bleu. And so then he also wanted Sissy Spacek, which, you know, he had great taste. Right? Yeah, yeah. And she said, she turned it down. She said, no, I'm too old. Ooh. So then there was me. Oh. So they, I got flown in that day, got put in wardrobe, 
my first scene is this kissing scene with the most amazing looking actor I've seen in my life. You know those French guys? <laughs> Clint Howard. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I'm in this movie and, and I, did, I shot three scenes without even ha- having read the script. Wow. So nice. anyway, it, it changed my life in that not only did he cast me in that movie, then he cast me in a second movie. Wait, wait, wait. What was, wait, wait, was, was that first, first film? Was the first Blood film was called Blood Relatives. Blood Relatives. It was his first English language film. And you got killed in that, right? And I got killed, and it was a flashback on my the, life. What is, could you give us kind of like the basic plot of that? Well, they, they, he wanted to kind of do like Clute. Mm-hmm. And the plot, right. you know, all, all Claude Chabrol movies deal with incest, as you know. He was fascinated with that. Wow. And it's about uh, me <laughs> and uh, my murder. And it was, uh, my co- I had an affair with my cousin, and his sister murdered me because she was jealous because she was into her brother. And, um, wow. Tw- twisted. Yeah, twisted. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. when I look back at it, I see one way that I look like a young, you know, like, a, what was his wife's name? I can't believe I've forgotten. Stéphane Audran. Oh. Stephen. And uh, I, I can see how I appealed to him. And I did have this natural instinct that mm-hmm. was, was really wonderful. But one of the really great things I, I, I remember about Claude Chabrol, and I think about it every time when it comes down on at 9 a.m. in the morning, is he was just fascinated by American television. Because mm-hmm. imagine this was a time, 1977, where, they, where, where we didn't have, like the rest of the world didn't have access to American television like they do now. Right. And he was fascinated with American television and the game shows. So game he, shows. He'd, come on, he'd come on the set and say, a new car! With a French accent. <laughs> and, <laughs> because they're giving away these huge, like, they, you know, in France yeah. they wouldn't have game shows. Nobody would act ridiculously like they do here just to get on the game <laughs> oh, show. Those, those and French. reality shows. Oh, they, you know, they, I'd they, never they, watch that They show. were French French and they wouldn't yeah. act Time to play, like leave a tip! <laughs> <laughs> and, and so he was just fascinated by watching, and, and he he was also fascinated by American uh, like rag magazines, like you know this is before like, people like tabloids. And, yeah, yeah. Like he he'd be reading those. Yeah, you know on the set while <laughs> he's waiting, it's, it's while waiting for the stuff. lighting. Yeah. He's he'd waiting. be horrified now though. Yeah, yeah. horrified is word. Yeah, no, yeah. he's he, yeah, and. Uh, well, that's what he spent his time doing, yeah. waiting for the lighting. He'd be looking at like American, you know, rag magazines. But remember, like, was it Movie Mirror? Or wow. something? Yeah, 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 yeah. That all the women, like that. They, they were in the hair salons, the women's hair salons. Yeah, James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, I don't know if you've noticed photo play. how nice his hair is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, photo play. Yeah, exactly. Right. It takes hours to get the James Gomez look. Yeah, and they, they would have the boxes over the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and then also remember like Tiger Beat, like oh, stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was on the so, cover. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. So, so it was. Really, you know, it was just fun watching his perception of America. This cast, yeah. though, to you, I mean, Donald Sutherland, yeah. David Hemmings, you mm, had a lot of scenes with David cast. Hemmings. David yeah. Hemmings was the first older man I had a crush on. Wow. Oh. Yeah. I have a crush on him now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I, I didn't know he was gay. Oh, oh! Did, did you know that? I did not know that. Uh-huh. So I had a shot. Is what you're saying? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, nobody seems to know that he's gay. Like my manager, it's his like favorite movie, and I had to tell him. Like you know, yep. Blow Up was his fa- favorite. Right. Everybody's yeah. favorite. Yeah. That, that movie, and he amazing. He's gay yeah. either. So I had such a crush on him, and we hung out all the time. Like you know, we would go to Rich Carlton for lunch and. I, I couldn't believe this guy. He was such a gentleman and so good looking and, and such a, you know, he had that English, English thing going on. Okay. English. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sure. Sorry. And well, the gay, well, gay thing too. Yeah. <laughs> but, did but, did but, he have to tell you? I mean, was there a moment where he had to say, hey, listen, yeah. I don't go that way? Did you? No, yeah. the, the moment is when you're a woman, like eventually any guy you hang out with, the f- shoe drops. Mm. <laughs> and right. it, that never happened with him. It mm. was like totally. Wow. I never felt threat. Not threatened the wrong word. I never felt any kind of innuendo ever, mm. ever, ever, ever. And my mother came down to visit actually the set once, and we were rehearsing a scene, and she didn't know. And it was kind of in the movie, or like a romantic scene where he's like playing with my my necklace. And she yeah. finally she was walking back and forth, and she finally turned to him and she said, "What's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you know, Claude Giroux has such great taste in actors. I mean, Donald Pleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, so we, yeah. Yes. we love. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but did you did you do a scene with it? I, no, I don't know. no, and yeah. all I, you know, like in all the bios, it said. I had my first movie starring opposite Donald Sutherland. I it was about me, because but I had no really. scene right. with him. He's looking yeah. at the murder. But that's right. that's the spin. Mm-mm. But I'll never forget after like Donald used to go to what they called in Canada. They called them 
the rushes in, in, in America, in real America, America. Um, they call it the dailies, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but they're, they're called the rushes, which makes more sense, really, because you're rushed to get it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, you are. Before digital. Mm-hmm. Okay? True. So, so everybody came up to me and said, Donald says you're really good. <gasps> and now when I watch the film, I'm thinking, what was he thinking? Oh. Uh, you know, because I, the second film, Violette, I think I'm really good at it. Uh, it's another to, Chabrol film, right? Yeah, he cast me in a French trench movie. So this is the wow. same guy who likes the incest coach, stuff. He's yes, the French it's guy. the incest okay. guy. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's the God. French guy. No, 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 there's <laughs> another incest story in here. It's, oh. it's, like, it's like the Lizzie Borden case. Let me grab a France. drink. It's a tr- <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have another <laughs> sip too. It, and it's a true story. It's like the Lizzie Borden of France. And wow. I didn't know I'm starring opposite the Meryl Streep of France. Ooh. And yeah, Isabelle Huppert. Oh, oh, wow. And yes. again, Stéphane Audran was in the movie. And mm-hmm. I found out that it was like kind of his alimony deal with her. <gasps> that, you know, he doesn't have to pay alimony, but will pull put her in all of his films. Mm, really? Oh, you heard it here first, yeah, folks. Wow. Yeah. Monster party. My Try ex- to get that deal no, no, these my days. <laughs> no, no, no. I tried to make this deal with my ex-husband. He's this brilliant sound editor and ADR supervisor who has looped like the best of the best. Mm-hmm. And I tried to make that deal with him. So yeah. you, know, you don't have to pay me anything. Just have me, you know, revoice with some of these big stars. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Somehow, not the same culture. Yeah. I, I think this show is going to turn it all around. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But, um, th- yeah. so, so that really gave me legitimacy and suddenly I could get auditions for the CBC in Canada. Right, mm-hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> and National Film Board. I couldn't get in before. Now, yeah. is this what brought you to Phobia? phobia. No, it didn't bring me to Phobia. Oh, phobia so wasn't right next? away. Uh, there was this film called It Rained All Night, The Day I Left, and that's kind of when it was discovered that I was, at that time, really only as good as my director because I, I didn't have a technique, mm-hmm. and this director was not as strong as, cl- like, Claude, like, with, like, a lot of these new wave, you know, or a lot of great directors, they they just let you go with your natural instinct, yeah. and this guy wasn't... His name? Uh, his name? I, yeah, I what was his name? What was his name? You know, it's it's. Hard. I, I'd like to, I, I'd like to work. He he actually he actually he directed Jodie Foster in the Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane. <gasps> oh, oh, we talked about that. Nicholas oh, wow. Gessner. Nicholas Nick, Gessner. Nicholas Gessner. Yeah. And I don't think it was so much his fault that there was a lot of uh, dynamics going on in that set where there were people that were on cocaine, people that were manic depressive, people that were drunk all the time. Yeah, you know, you know that. Pull, pulling, right? pull, yes. you know, pulling the American Star thing where they they take oh. off for a couple days, you don't see them. Oh, man. And I'd never seen this kind of behavior on these other two movies with people like David Hemmings and Donald Pleasance and Donald Sutherland that were, were you just don't do those kind of things. It's so, kind of like the heyday of that behavior too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was kind of the hey, the, well, it got worse in the 80s. Yeah, that was 1979. Yeah, so, true. no, but you know, that that's American stars. They, they It's like, how close is my, my trailer to the set? You would never do that in, <laughs> right. like, in, in English and American, European actors do not behave that way. Right, right. So, I, I spend a lot of my time on that film being terrified of who was going to turn on who next and uh you know other people coming on to me and offering me cocaine and so um the one scene that really worked for me is one where i was just allowed to follow my instincts and i I gotta hand it to tony curtis like he just took me on the side and we he walked with me holding my hand Mm -hmm. and he talked story to me and that's what all great directors do they don't tell you i want you to put your elbow up when you say this line right they just talk story and that's what Mm -hmm. tony did Mm mm-hmm and then we did this wonderful scene together that was almost improvised, and it's one of the most you know wonderful moments that I've seen. And the other great thing about that movie is Tony Curtis. You got to hand it to him; he he's a brilliant actor. Oh, he's, oh yeah. he's, he's he was Big underestimated yeah. so often. Sweet smell of success. I mean, come on, Boston Strangler. He could, oh, he could do both. He, he he could do both. And he, he was not only accomplished as an actor, but he was, here, here we were in the middle of the desert and he invited me into his trailer and he goes, look at this. Because he was a sculptor and he'd taken all these hangers and made sculptors. And he was like a, a pilot and he was a, a swimmer and an equestrian and he was like the most articulate man. And, and then he'd say, you know, I'm bipolar. <laughs> now you tell I, me. I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I loved his candor. I, I loved yeah, his right. candor, and he could steal a scene from anyone. I mean, right. Lou Gossett is a wonderful actor too. You know, the best of the best in both comedy and and but but man, Tony, he he, he would do a scene, and your eyes were riveted on him, and and he he would say things to me sometimes like, "Whatever you do, Lisa, you're doing a phone scene." 
just dial or do something while you're in the phone because it'll cut away from you. And, <laughs> and, and, and then for the man that was made fun of and criticized for his accent, I had a Canadian accent at the time. I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. You know, Canadian, Canadian. Sure. And I remember him saying to me, and I think that you could use some voice in dialect lessons. He said that to you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Isn't that wonderful that yeah. he passed that on? Yeah. Because he... Yeah. he like so much of his career, people made fun of that moment. No, just the Spartacus. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. They, they made fun of it. But he's still great in that movie, he, though. He, yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Classics. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's still mm. great in that movie. You know, he was a movie star. He yeah. was. And he and, sounds like he was like the oasis of class in that situation. Oh, yeah. He he, he, he had so much class and, and refinement. And and he worked with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and, yes, and, he did. And, uh, you know, could pull his own. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he could be as sexy as her. Mm -hmm. But... This is a man where I realized that I didn't want to have that. I made the decision on that film, you know, never have huge stardom. I made the decision on that film. Really? It, it scared me to death because huh. I saw this man who was hounded, who never had any privacy, no matter where he was, having dinner. People just wouldn't leave him alone. One time we were in the middle of the desert and these Bedouin. Bedwin. <laughs> we're all looking at him and giggling. And, and finally they, they, they came up and had the nerve and they, they said to him, are you John Wayne? Uh, <laughs> he said, no, I'm his brother. <laughs> such great sense of humor. and If we had him now, this whole ISIS thing, maybe it could be a thing of the past. You know? <laughs> Wait, which desert was this filmed in? Uh, this was in Israel, and we had war insurance, actually. On the wow. Film. Wow. wow. Jeez. Yeah, and you could feel the tension. You could feel the tension. And, you know, it's a place where, you know, people, like in those days, people had boom boxes. Yeah. So you'd see people on their, like, camels with their boom boxes. Mm -hmm. And sure. other people, like, with, well, everybody walked around with machine guns. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, really, really wow. interesting. But I, it's Surreal. so beautiful. You understand why everyone's fighting over it. And he really embraced his Judaism there. I mean, mm -hmm. he, you know, uh, that that's something that nobody really talked about in his career. You know, we knew his name is Tony Schwartz, but he really got in touch with a, a part of himself that he hadn't before because he, you know, had never been to Israel. Wow. But wow. Uh, yeah, well, he he changed the script too because I remember having him having an argument with the, and I, I felt so shamed by it um, because I was nineteen and he was fifty four, and he said, I remember him having this argument with the director saying. Look, I, I, she looks so young for her age. He said, I, I'm, I'm not, you, you got to change the script. He goes, we're, this story. He said, I'm, I'm going to look like, you know, I, I'm a predator. He didn't use that word, but something like that. Sure. Mm -hmm. And he, this is ridiculous. And I was crestfallen because I was thinking, I'm not going to have the affair on, in this movie with Tony Curtis. Oh. I'm not going to get to kiss him. Oh. And then also, like, I'll never forget, I felt that I arrived when I got on that set. More than the culture role thing, because I get there. And there's, he hadn't arrived yet, but there was a director's chair and it said Tony Curtis on it. <laughs> and it was empty. And I just was waiting for him to show up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then he find, and the only other time I felt like that was when I was waiting for Christopher Plummer to show up. Oh, oh another great. Another movie star. Yep, from yeah. Star Crash. Well, I was going to say, al already. Yeah, great, great. But, but <laughs> Come on. Tony Curtis was of that era of movie stars. They dress like movie stars no matter where they are. Here he was in the middle of the desert with his white cowboy boots on, his <laughs> silver down vest, and yeah. his cowboy hat. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. But already at this early in your career, you, you're, you're working with you know, the veteran actors very like spoiled. Hemmings, Sutherland, yeah. Tony Curtis. I got very spoiled. And is the next one John Huston? Yeah, the next one was John Huston. Phobia, Phobia. Phobia. 1980. I, I don't know if this movie is as well known, maybe, as it no, should no, be. No, it isn't. And I, I, I've recently asked why it hasn't been re-released. And because I think, too, it's undervalued. Yeah. And because we were talking about Hal Ashby being, an, you know, an undervalued and underrated and, you know, different things are. And somebody told me it's because there's a, a legal problem with the soundtrack. <gasps> wow, oh, that could be that could be yeah, with that. Andre Gagnon, and yeah. I want to I want to now that I found that out, I want to call him. He's Can Canadian, Canadian, uh -huh. and say, "Come on, what's the deal? Yeah, you know, why are you holding back? Yeah, the longer he waits, the less <laughs> no, no, chance." No, but this you know. is really you know you're you're taking it away from a lot of people. But I remember being intimidated that I was going to audition for John Huston. Well, this this was I think his last film he had directed, right? 
No, oh, no he, 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 he did the uh, did one more. Mafia yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Pritch, oh, is right. Pritch is on it. That's but, right. But he wasn't in the best of shape, though. He Sean. wasn't. He was on oxygen. I mean, he was on oxygen when he was directing you. Wow. Yeah, you, you know, he, it was still you're in the presence of God. Yeah, he had, this, he had that Hemingway <laughs> sure. lost generation yeah. totally. spirit about him. The lawgiver. And when he talked, <laughs> it was like God that talking. Big voice. Yeah. 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 the greatest it, voice. Yeah, and that face. Yeah, you know, and and so he apparently said to the director, "I want two similar actresses that are completely different from one another." So and he goes, I only want to see two. So it was me and Sarah Torgoff, who was in Meatballs. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and okay. Sarah was a really good actress. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw her at the audition, I knew who the other actor, and I was trembling in my boots. I was like, oh, no. So just like a lot of great uh, directors, he, most of the audition was spent talking. So he just kind of talked to you? We just talked. About just general things? And, and then, I, I don't know whether it was a callback or the same... I think it was the same audition because it was a very upsetting role and I hate when people talk to you when you have a really emotional scene to do. Yeah. Because you want to be yourself but part of you is distracted. So I, I was really nervous because Sarah went in before me and she came down the stairs and I could tell she'd been crying. So <gasps> I thought, well, she hit the... She hit the. She did a crying she hit, scene. Well, it was a crying scene. It was a very <sighs> emotional scene. Like that's, I don't know really if you've seen the movie, but it's that oh, yeah. scene. Yeah, that yeah. I, yeah. Yes. And you so, said, I'll oh, forget it. So, I, so I'm thinking, because there's always that moment where you think, oh, you know, am I not going to you know, hit the moment because I'm focused on other things yeah. instead of the story. Right. But it worked for me and I, I couldn't believe it when I got cast. Well, what did he talk to you about? He did brush into Oh God, we Racial, talked. Water, we, we, we talked about politics. <laughs> yeah, politics. Uh, we really? talked about everything. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. great is that? The, again, a thing that you probably don't run into a lot these days of somebody who brings you in, talks to you to kind of just relax you, and then or they they, they want to see what you're. You know, they already know you can act. They get a feeling for right. you, and they, and they just want to see if you're right for the part. And they know that and, they're going to be hanging like, with like, you for, for the example, next. Last you know. week, I got called in for something, and I want to say. This is so American. And are you kidding me? It was the day before. They bring me in, and it was 12 pages. Okay. And, and I want to say, can you just look at my reel? Can you just meet me <laughs> and tell me if I'm right for the part, and then I'll come in. Mm-hmm. And then you get there, and they go, hey, we're only going to do this one scene. And I, I find that such an insult yeah. to actors. And the other thing is, I, I, I want to put this out here. we got to stop calling them auditions. Mm. Okay. Why? They're, because they're consultations. Oh. Like with any lawyer or uh-huh. doctor or anything else. We're going in there and we're giving you an idea of this is how the project will be done. Mm-hmm. Because when you're saying audition, it's a supplication. You, it, it's you're asking for something. Mm-hmm. And they're getting ideas from what I do. Mm-hmm. They may not think I'm right for the part, but they, they may like what I did and, and, and direct somebody else to do that. Mm-hmm. And I also think that with these multiple of callbacks that go on forever, this would not happen if, like in other professions, you got paid for your consultation. Yeah. Well, that is that's a, true. an amazing point. Mm-hmm. We're either artists and professionals or we're not, and we're members of a union, and they're not even having callbacks. They have allbacks, where they have everybody that's back. That's true. I've been to a lot because of those, it, you yeah. Know, it, it doesn't cost them anything. And then the other thing that's gotten very challenging with, with digital and everything now is you know they're asking you to self-tape, or you just come in and you read for the, the casting director. So, it's, so it's, it's all virtual. And so there's nobody saying... You know, I really like what you did, but this is more what we're looking for. And you can do right. the adjustment. Yeah. Right. So you get that one shot, and that's kind of very disappointing and frustrating for me, too. Mm-hmm. And also, you can, it's kind of like how I feel as an actor is. I'm like the horse and the director's the jockey and I can tell how good they are by the way they ride me and some people bring out your best and other yeah. people don't mm-hmm. and there's some of these people they don't know what to say to you. Right. They want to be able to say this is what I want and they don't you I don't know how they don't teach that it. in film school mm-hmm. but if I could say anything to those young budding actors out there directors out there people used to say and I, I used to keep this like in the closet I used to think oh my god these like great directors don't say anything. They don't direct. Mm -hmm. So when I ran into the lead actor that I was in love with for so long on Blood Relatives a couple films later, and he'd since worked not only worked with Culture Borrell, but worked with Joseph Losey and Mm -hmm. all these other big directors, we kind of confided that in each other. We said, the big directors, they don't don't direct, right? They don't say anything to you. He goes, that's right. (laughs) John Hewson would say the secret to his success is you get a great script Mm -hmm. and you get great actors. Yeah. And you let them do their crap. Well, trust them. Their, their instincts. Yeah. They know, yeah. Their and and, and, and so, like, when I work with Hal Ashby, the same thing. He would get the best people in each department. He got Quincy Jones to do the music. He got Margaret Booth as the editor who yeah. who edited with 
D.W. Griffith. He got Michael wow. Riva oh. to do the art direction. He got Anne Roth, who is an Edith Head of Hollywood, to do the wardrobe. Hal yeah. Ashby was the slugger's wife, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's same thing. They don't say anything to you. Mm. And by that time, I trusted that. But at first, I used to be really mistrustful. Like, they're not saying anything. Like, I, I remember on my second film with Claude Chabrol, I said, you're not even talking to me on this film. He goes, that's what I want. I want you to feel isolated. Oh. Ah. Yeah. So, Lisa, can you just tell us the, the phobia, the, the basic just idea the, you know, It's a really interesting phobia. premise. Yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting people. murder mystery. Yeah. Uh, you know, a thriller. And um, so it was a tax shelter days. Okay. And uh, where everybody became a born again Canadian. Like, you oh, know, see. Glenn Ford was in the movie because he'd been born in Quebec. Uh-huh. You know, all these people you never knew were Canadian were Canadian. Right. So, John Houston's dad, Walter Houston, he was born in Toronto. Ergo, John Houston was Canadian. I see. Okay, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Born, like James Cameron, born again Canadian. Uh-huh. Born in Niagara Falls. But, you know, how, yep. many, how many months was he there? Yeah. So, anyway, John Houston was on this film and a very interesting premise in that. It's about, and they're doing it now, where you expose people to what they're afraid of, their phobia. Right. So my phobia was of being raped. And I'll never forget this part, because I had to stand up to John Houston. Mm-hmm. And they now, in the union in Canada, have a, a policy about this in the agreement that, you know, they have to tell you uh, in the breakdown, and they have to show you the script that there's nudity. Uh-huh. Because so you didn't know. I, I didn't know. It wasn't in the script. And my agent at This is the a time, big deal here. This is this is a huge, huge deal. This is This is huge. He gets a call from the casting director saying, well, there's going to be a bathroom, bathtub scene, and uh, there's going to be a flash of a breast, and Lisa's going to be nude. So, you know, everyone's intimidated by John Houston. So my (laughs) agent tells me that. And I'm saying, well, they didn't tell me that. So I went to John up to John Houston because yeah. I had to really like, oh my God, you know, I, I wasn't planning on ever taking off my clothes, you right. know, in a film. Okay. But, well, my parents say, because my dad didn't want me to be an actor anyway. Right. So I got the nerve to go up to John Houston mm-hmm. and say, you know, Catherine Hepburn would never do any nudity. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he said, for me, she would. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, where's that film? <laughs> By the time that happened, I guess people didn't want to see her. Oh. Yeah. Maybe well, although people I have, be the judge. I have talked happy, to you about that. having the, the series of older women in Playboy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a great, hey. oh, no, fabulous yeah. great Very, very, very uh, I think, uh, interesting. So this was very hard for me to stand up to these people. Yeah. So then, so then they said they were going to get a stand-in for it. And I felt manipulated because I'm looking at this stand-in. <laughs> and she's got this huge mole right here. Oh. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, wait, they pick this? her up from the corners. Like, hey, yeah, are you standing right. for Lisa? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. I got her from that's the bus right. stop. Yeah. Right. No, hey, this is not Houston? Hollywood. This is not. This is not Hollywood, right? Oh my god. So I'm thinking, I don't want somebody to think that's my body. <laughs> so the vanity comes yeah. in. Yeah. But on the other side, the artist came in because uh-huh. I've been, you know, I'd started out working with French actors, and I'll never forget. You know, work, working with Isabelle Rupel, like they think nothing about this, like drinking wine, like oh, I'm taking my clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought oh, I should be an artiste. Like, yes. Oh, just yes. <laughs> just yes. So so there was that. Easy. There was that element. There was John Houston doesn't need to be salacious. He's John Houston. He doesn't have to exploit right, he's people. Not Absolutely. He's really so like, there was yeah. that. Like so, I was mm. I was rationalizing everything, and then there was also the vanity. Like she's going to be my body double. You know, mm. and I th- and the artiste saying they're going to know it's a body double because they see this big mole here, and I don't have one. <laughs> so I said, "I'll tell you what." Was there hair on the mole? <laughs> <laughs> that's a dead giveaway. You know, that, that that that's very funny because on one of my commercials that I did, it was just a close up of my mouth on this popcorn commercial, and they called my mother and they were asking her all these questions like, "Well, does she have any hair around?" Her? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know, I come from a Scottish family, and they have a very they have a sense of humor. And she said she was always telling the family, "Well, I wanted to tell them she doesn't have any hair on her uh, above her mouth, but she's got a few on her rear end." <laughs> 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 and and so so anyway, I said, "Tell you what, 
you shoot it the way you want to. I'm saying this to John Houston. Sweet. <laughs> wow. Crazy. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. must have been young, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm That's still, ballsy. I understand. I'm, going, I'm still going to university. So I'm doing yeah. my political science essay. I'm giving it to the AD to say, can you mail it today? Because it's due today and has to be postmarked. But it, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, and so we had that in common. Like, you know, John Houston and I would talk about, because you know, he's very erudite, as you know. Yeah, right, right. So I said to my agent, you tell them he can shoot it the way he wants. And if I don't like it, <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the film. Wait, wait. Uh, wow. wow. Wait, you said, you said. I told my agent, and that was in the, put in the contract. No I can't, way. I can't Fantastic. believe it now. I can't believe it now. Do you still have that contract? <laughs> yeah, I, I should. I, should I, yeah. I have my, a letter from John Houston. So for, for oh, my immigration. Nice. So you got oh, really? final cut say that scene. as to yeah. you got yeah. to look at your nudity. So, 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 final and say. So, so, John so no, but it didn't look like. See, he wanted what he described to me was not the way it looked. Uh huh. I agreed with the way it. it he he said it was. He said it was going to be high up above. Okay. And looking down onto this floating nude body. That yeah. Very vulnerable. Sure. And it was very um, disinfected. You know, mm -hmm. hospital. And I agreed with that. So when I went to the rushes, as they call them in Canada, or dailies, you know, I've since learned that you have to have closed rushes for stuff like that. Uh -huh. you know? So everybody was there. Even the even the drivers. Oh, the drivers! <laughs> the, guy, the guy who's sweeping for. Hey, I got sweep. I've got to sweep in here. They're what's, all there. What's going on? I'm a caterer. I have to be here. <laughs> it's, so, it's so embarrassing. You remember there like like 50 people you know, in there? Was, yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. It was loaded with people. Oh and and now I look back, I'm thinking maybe they, they were there because of the controversy. They couldn't have been there just because they're going to get to see me nude. Yeah. Okay. But, Probably a little both. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what I didn't like about it, it wasn't overhead. It was kind of a yes. little bit at an yeah. angle so yeah. that you're looking up as Sharon Stone would say, with the vagina with a point of view. Yeah, right? well. Mm. It you had know. a point of view on the vagina. Hey, that sells tickets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although I have to say, I did watch this film very recently. Yeah, and you the, did. And, on, the final and, 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 that, and that scene... In my opinion, from your point of view, my point of view does not not my vaginas. Uh, <laughs> vaginas. I've never I have, a, uh, I'll, I've I'll never tell you later. Okay. I'll that's tell for, you later. That's for another show. Okay? I, I have a syndrome. Come but on. anyway, but that scene does not come off salacious in any way. You're very, no. you're very it, vulnerable. It is yeah, very, still yeah. very vulnerable and clinical. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah. no, no, no. And it's, it's no, it's and it's also not beautifully shot. Like it's we're not talking about story of O here. Like you know, you want in your yeah. first nude scene to look. You know, play yeah, line. yeah. Right. And yeah. suddenly, I'm looking like a Sally Man, like <laughs> shot. But I understand for the artistic point of view. But no, I, I, if it had been directly overhead shooting down, but it was like more at an angle. Right, so right, yeah. I yeah. had to say no. I, it's not acceptable. And just, I just want to give a, just the premise of this movie too, which is a cool idea. Which is Paul Michael Glaser mm -hmm. is this kind of like a very forward thinking. Uh, doctor, psych yeah. psychiatrist, doctor, who's just ver these very um, extreme measures are of trying to cure people of their phobias. Yes, and using the, films and that kind of thing. It's yes. sort of like a little kind of clockwork like, orangey. Yeah, like yeah. having yeah. them actually experience it head on to kind of so they can overcome it. But then what starts happening is his patients are starting to get killed off one by one. Bad yes. for business. And it's this murder mystery <laughs> about who the killer is. Yes. And also um, John Colicos is in it. As, Isn't uh, he great, John he's Bal Baltar so from uh, yes. Baltar Gladiga? And yes. he's great. He's and he had such an amazing presence. He had that kind of Oliver Reed thing going. Yes, very much so. Yeah, yeah. I met Oliver Reed on the oh. set. He oh, was do you tell. Well, like everybody was in Montreal at the time the doing the tax, you know, the tax <laughs> yeah. shelter series. Like, you know, I ended up in an elevator with Sterling Hayden. Oh, wow. oh. he had that <laughs> Ernest Hemingway thing. Going yes, on. yeah. yeah. Where it, it's man. like God walking through. <laughs> the, 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 you know, like you know, you know, he's somebody. I didn't know at the time it was Sterling Hayden. He had that John Houston thing. He had yes, John he did. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. Of the Ernest Hemingway thing, and he was like walking through. Like we were all sitting at this one hotel, and he was walking through the lobby, and I'm a alone with him in the elevator <laughs> and he has like you know uh track uh, shorts on and a bandana you know it's 80s you know but, but that's yeah. a physical look yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. he's okay. so Classic. tall yeah. and there was just that animal feeling going on he was sweating from running or whatever he's doing and oliver reed i i'm on uh blood relatives in my first time we're all the everybody's sitting at the ritz carlton then mm -hmm. and he was there, and my girlfriend that I went to high school who lived in Montreal was visiting at the time, and 
all these rooms were adjoining. It was like a Neil Simon film. <laughs> <laughs> Montreal <laughs> Suite. Door, it, 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 nice. Very no, nice. No, no, because how I met the leading man on my first thing, it's like it's, I heard somebody knocking on the door and I'm like, it's Oliver Reed. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy opens the door and it's like the best looking guy I've seen in my life. It's like this French actor, like, you know, oh. Jean-Paul Bromondo, young guy. Yeah. But anyway, on the Oliver Reed one, I'm with my girlfriend and Oliver Reed is like loaded what? What? what a surprise. No. no, no, no. You know, no. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, no. No, like, no, no, no. Because Richard Burton, that was all part of the culture, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. It was, Apparently. It, it, it was de rigueur. It was de rigueur. <laughs> sure. Or as they say in French, French French, de rigueur. Oh, so, there's the French. So okay. anyway, I'm there with my girlfriend, and so Oliver Reed is loaded, and there's this guy passed out on the floor at the Ritz Carlson in this in this room. Yeah, it's, it's a wardrobe fitting room actually that they turn into it, a hotel room. And so Oliver Reed goes, "Oh yeah, that's my bodyguard. He's just jet lagged." <laughs> 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 and, and, but, but the thing about these English, the, the thing about these English actors, they can be loaded. <laughs> And they still start. They start spewing out like you know Alan Bates these <laughs> monologues from Shakespeare. And my girlfriend and I are just like looking at the guy, and it's like, these are the best come on lines. Like, oh, yeah, they, right. they, no, they know what amazing. they're doing. Amazing, yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll never forget. You know that we talk about David Hemmings, and you know I had this big crush on him, and I'll never forget this because one day Donald Sutherland came into this. The, the, it was the same room where mm -hmm. they had like the wardrobe for all these different films okay. that they were shooting in Montreal and he said oh god I met this woman today blah 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 and David Hemmings responded with come on Donald you know I'm not into uh, younger girls and I was crestfallen <laughs> I said, what and now I realize that maybe he was telling him, you know, I'm gay, you know, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Right. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I had no idea who I was working with and how, how lucky I was. And and then Incredible. the John Houston thing. Yeah. yeah. It, now, it, other it, other it, than that bathroom, bathtub scene, though, in general, what was it like working on that movie being directed by Houston? I mean, was it a pretty smooth shoot? For me, it was. Yeah. Mm. And as my agent said, when he went to see The Rushes, he'd say, what I like is after every take, he says, good, dear. Very good. <laughs> no, nice. Lisa, nice. That is a really great impression. <laughs> Lisa, this may sound like a dumb question, but just out of pure curiosity, when you're murdered in the bathtub, the hands that strangle you, not to give anything away because it's a mystery. I can't remember who that was. But it was. It must have been an AD, right? Okay. With, 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 with but it wasn't the act. It wasn't the character or the actor who was it. That, the actual that, that was. That's another thing I experienced with American actors. Uh, oh. They don't stay for you. I see. They're 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 released and they don't say. F it it happened to me over and over in my career. I can't and I never do that. But Jane, I, James, you noticed the hands. The hands. I were, was just curious. Was you, you know when finally the killer was revealed? Well, I wonder if that was his actual hands who did the strangling. I was just a, no, no, you know, no, 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 no. That's another thing that you know, like it's different. To, diff, just a different culture here. Like, you know, like I, the I, reverse I'm angle. I, I can't these, tell yeah. you how often that's happened to me. I, I would never do that to another actor. When you're just shooting like your, your, your angle, then they're shooting the other person's angle. And then they leave. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're released. They, they shoot them first because, you know, you're cheaper, I guess, and you're not the star, as yeah. big a star. So they, get, they the stars get shot first, okay? Sure, right. right. And, you know, in ADR, they, they, they say, I don't do efforts. There's all kinds of things. Or you only have me for one day for looping. or efforts. There's all these things, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. I like Jeez. that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones came up to my ex-husband and went right in his face the first day that they were working together. He goes, let me tell you something. I don't do efforts. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Then. Wow. Yeah. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. That's no, I will stars not be getting your water. Was. Stars yeah. do not do efforts. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. And, 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 and something that's missing, right? Because like you want to, you want to be able to actually play against the person, even that person may not be on the camera at that moment. To have it real, right. you want to be. You know, craft, you end up craft -wise. you end up reading against an AD. Right. Right. Who's right. not an actor yeah. or the camera. Right. And so it actually sucks, requires yeah. much greater skill. Right. That's than true. Than the person who just left. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's and it, it's really hurtful. Yeah, and no, it's actually a very it. effective death scene too. I mean, it's, Thank you're you. really you're really in there with well, you. And you everything know. leading yeah, up yeah. to that, like that whole scene, I, I, I know it's uncomfortable, it's, isn't it? But it's so but it's very effective. It's so though. riviting. And, and the whole and thing is about visceral. Yeah, and the whole thing, the whole idea that it's about phobias and these people's fears and feelings. This makes me feel so much better because I can't tell you how many auditions I went to, where these younger directors would look at my resume and they go, phobia. <laughs> what? 
Yes. You worked no, with no, no, that, no. That, 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 was, that was a really bad John Huston film. And I wanted to say, just how many John Huston films will you ever direct in your entire career? Yes. Yeah, really. yeah, see, see, the yeah. funny thing is, it may let's, not be, let's just talk about a couple of his. It, it Maybe yeah, one. Yeah. Will you ever direct one that is as good as his? Look, yeah. yeah. And it's the arrogance that they would they, they would look at my resume and that's what they would single out. That's yeah, weird. It's, it's like it may not be the and best. And now I'm John, older. Now, not, now I will say that. It's not maybe the best John Huston film, but how many directors would dream to have that film as as like part of their resume, right? You know or to I mean? be right. in a John yeah. Huston film and to have that performance. That's right. It, it, it's it's a movie that I'm really hoping. Like I said, I'm hoping that whatever legalities are cleared up because of that, yeah. that is a movie that definitely screams to be rediscovered on Blu-ray. Well, maybe we should do we should do the ice bucket I, challenge for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you, what yeah. you think? Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's really really sad. It's it, it's really really sad, and I'm sure it was really hard for him too. And it's just a testament. Uh, you know, who knows. What was going on for him? Uh, I know what was going on with Hal Ashby, that he was not able to make The Slugger's Wife the film it should have been, and it was a heartbreak for everybody. So there's all kinds of other, like it's such a collaborative sure. art, and it's one of the it is, the yeah. only things left in the world that is actually handmade. Film is still handmade, and it's very collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. And ph- Phobia is also kind of a mystery, because there's not much available about it online, and uh, the screenplay was co-written by Jimmy Sangster, who had done a lot of British, a lot of Hammer, Hammer movies, Hammer yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the story, a very good writer, right? He was brilliant, and the, the story was co-credited to Ron Shusett, who I, I think was credited on Alien. Is oh, that yes, right? You're right. I didn't Ronald know Shusett, any of this you're right. And it's wow. a fascinating story. It's it, I, I, that is a movie that I said I just recently saw, yeah. And I'm riveted all the way through. I really well, enjoyed the, it. The only choice that was different for me when you look at all the cast. The only choice that did not seem John Houston to me, that I wondered whether it was imposed by the producers for sales or whatever, was Paul Michael Glazer. Hmm. Yeah. That, when I, you, I, you, I, he does not I had a feeling like you a, were going to say He that. does yeah. not seem like a John Houston actor to me. Yeah. Right. There's also a pacing in that film that's a little slow that almost feels like the pacing goes with his acting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he, but, he really does kind of like... And I'm a fan of his and yeah. other things, oh, yeah. but he's, no, like him, he but is very, he is very so like uh, sentence, sentence, yeah. sentence, <laughs> so, so look, I, sentence, like, credits. Lisa has done a lot of stuff and, and this is great about phobia, but I kind of want to move on because there's so much to talk right, about sure, for your yeah, career. I kind of want to get to the next let's, big thing. Let's, let's cut to, uh, let's get some. It was a John Houston movie. Just yes, I know, that, okay. I know. I know. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Anson is pants. Well, let me just tell you the next one okay, that I want to talk about is very, okay, yes. Stage, Controversial. Uh, 1981, and this is the time where there's a particular type of horror film yes. that was very big. Huge. The slasher boom. Slasher uh, boom. Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh my yeah, God. Era. I love this was This was like basically almost every holiday was Halloween. a day of, of killing. Sure. <laughs> Halloween. Right. Friday the 13th. Now, now, it's, now it's mattress sales. <laughs> <laughs> well, with um, my family, it's still killing. But uh, You were in a very th- this is a special. Kind of, kind of iconic yes. film, which was a happy birthday to me. Happy birthday mm-hmm. to me. Do, Directed Which, by another quite renowned director, huge. J. Jay Lee Thompson, who Cape directed Cape Fear, uh, um, Which Guns, Guns of Navarone, Tiger Bay, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, yes. Battle, Battle for the Planet, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yes, uh, Cape Fear, by the way, it, it, one of my favorite it, movies of all time. Battle it, for the Planet it, of the Apes, it, it, no, man. No, come on, not so Cape much. Fear, <laughs> we 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 don't we see Cape Fear and we see the Scorsese one and it's yeah. fabulous. Oh, right? sure, fabulous. Yeah. I, I would argue a little and, over and, the top. And then you watch J. Lee Thompson's, and that's the real deal. Oh yes, my God. Robert yes. Mitchum in that thing. The subtle Another things guy, that he does. It, it was to regard to drink. Yes, yes right? yeah. But 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 Lisa was but Lisa wasn't in that film. I want to get to Happy Birthday to Me. We'll get there. Okay, so. Here's the thing on Happy Birthday to Me. Yes. The A-list actors in yes. Canada all were in Happy Birthday to Me. You had a cast. It was quite a cast. The B-list, yes, it was. The B-list were in the low-budget film, not shortly, when we were shooting in Montreal. The B-list of Canadian actors that were up and coming okay. were all shooting in the Maritimes, My Bloody Valentine. Oh. 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 Gotcha. That's, which is another. So, so for the example, C-list was Arbor Day Massacre. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't remember that. So, That's good, I, Matt. so, so for example, Lori Hallier was my stand-in uh, on Happy Birthday to Me. Uh huh. And I felt really bad because she, I knew she was a great actress and she was going to National Theater School. Yeah. And she was my stand-in. Yeah. Wow. And and then also they all got like hauled off to do this film that sounded like exploitation film. Mm-hmm. You know, My Bloody Valentine. Where, yeah. You know, they're all treated badly and paid badly. And anyway, but. 
she went on to be, a, you know, this great actress, and she was great in that movie, and also great gal, great broad. But uh, happy birthday to me, same thing. We are all just, we don't, we just met with Lee Thompson. That's all. You just, just met with him. Really? No, no really? reading. And initially, I was going in for the Tracy Bregman part. Oh. And oh. I had it. And who, then who Tracy okay. Bregman became a born again Canadian as well because she had more TVQ, which at that time, it was the first time TV became important because up to then, I, I didn't even do TV for ever because in those days, people didn't cross over. Mm-hmm. So she became a born again Canadian. So she qualified for the tax shelter and she had big TVQ because she was a big soap opera star. Mm-hmm. So she got. The role opposite. Um, Melissa Sue. Anderson. Yeah, which is was my role. But that, that, wow. that that's that's fine. And for our listeners, Melissa Sue Anderson, who is famous for doing the Little House on the Prairie, Prairie. Right. she yes. was the older sister. Yes, by the, the way. blind one. Right? Yes, and yes. Well, she kind of this, eventually kind of a, becomes blind. Oh. And, and this, this was like her big, kind of a little bit of a break though for her. Yeah. to play this kind of character. Too, yeah, very right? in a, in a, different. In a, in a horror here, film, a think slasher. Very, film. very different. But very it, but shown at the same time with a big name director. I, I don't think people thought of this as an exploitation film exactly. Well, no, no, it, it, you know, it, it yeah. wasn't. It was no. big budget for the time. Yeah, for the time. Yeah. And a very smart, unusual screenplay. There's a lot of twists and turns all the way through that thing. Yeah. Half the time you're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. what? Yeah. what the camera moves are great. Oh, yeah. yes. and, and they weren't disruptive. Like, See, John Huston, he keeps the, the camera stagnant and he just watches the scene. And so there's two kinds of directors too that I, I, I find. And th- there's one that what they do is they say, this is how the camera is going to move. And so you have to choreograph your performance around the camera. And then there's the, the great directors. They watch the rehearsal and then they set up the camera. And so it's much more right. organic. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lee would do that. And Lee also knew how to work with stand-ins, which a lot of directors oh. don't know how to do. So so what would happen is the, the principal actors, we would do the scene, and then they would light with the extras, not the extras, the stand-ins. But the other thing, too, is I find that some directors, Lee Thompson, his, his camera moved a lot, but yeah. it didn't get in the way, like you're not looking at the camera right, moves. Right, it's not, bring, not right. bringing attention to itself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing I noticed with the great directors is there's not superfluous takes or anything because they're editing in their heads. Right. And right. of my favorite first time directors, it's always editors. Mm-hmm. Like Transformations, first time director, yeah. that, that director. No, we'll I, get to that. I, I, I loved him. But if it's a first time director or writer, it's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, now, now just really quickly, Sean, uh, the happy birthday to me, the, the, the basic concept. Well, there, it's kind of like, it, it's like this kind of high school clique, you know, these kind of rich kids. And uh, Melissa Sue Anderson is kind of haunted by. She's part of this of this clique. Yeah, she's yes. kind of haunted by this past where her mother died, and it in a involves, tragic. Yeah, and, and this happened is, on her birthday. Yeah. And, and as people to hang with, these are not good people. But but but, but Sean, the, this accident is like there's a br- it's a bridge. Right. A, what are those? It's a, not a suspension. A, it's a, a drawbridge. Draw a drawbridge. Yeah. yeah. Where the car urban yeah. drawbridge. But the movie was kind of promoted too for being like. Uh, I think it was some like you know eight of the most unusual murders you've ever seen. They are. They were know? unusual. It, yeah. it was like the phobia was the most unusual deaths as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Now, but I had I, no idea who was the killer in the well, movie. I, 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 is that right? No idea. Sometimes it's kind of We didn't know either. They kept no. changing it. Like, That's they, they right. wouldn't say it, and 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 and, and so we didn't know either. Really, it's, it's pretty yeah. outrageous. But I would say that that really makes it sin, stand out from a lot of the other slasher films. I completely it's, agree. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of well, crazy, that's that's so great. interesting. I didn't know that people wouldn't figure that out. And also, in, in the original movie, I am killed too. I get the action. You the are head. killed. That's because what, I was going to say. But it was right? going to be an X rating, so they really? made a survivor. No, you're yeah, literally you, the only like, one who you, survived. You can cut off a woman's breasts in a movie, <laughs> but God forbid you get the axe in the head. Oh, okay, yeah, but but I just want to, to 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 listeners that I mean I don't remember that scene and uh, a breast being cut off and and no no I'm saying I'm saying because you know you know what's funny it's an example Lisa, I, that's, that's Lisa, an example it, yeah, it, it was like it, I remember I had an agent who called me up and he said okay so. Robert De Palma wants to see you for this this movie, and it, it opens, and you're getting a drill going through your chest. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I said, yeah. no, I, I really don't want to do that. Yeah. And he said, but it's a Robert De Palma movie. Or Brian De Palma. <laughs> Brian, sorry, Brian De Palma. Yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, demon booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know it yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. But 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 anyway, um, yeah, Lee Thompson, another real great gentleman. I don't know how he did it because most of that film was shot at night. Yeah. And um, it looks it, really good. Yes, and, it does. And, and you, great, had, you had a, a great cast. You had uh, Glenn Ford. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Ford. Another, another born again Canadian. Which he, really he was born in Quebec City. We found out it gave that film, I think, some credibility. You know, I mean, he had done, you know, Superman. Oh, I mean, I mean, he's big. Like, 
the the amount of films that guy did. Yeah, he, he was I mean, like John Wayne. I can't yes. believe you. I, I, he got into a film called Happy Birthday to Me, but you know, and and uh, kind but of like he's a good in it. Movie. Yeah, he's, he's great. great. And he's, he's great in it. And I, I I'm so glad I did this now. But and it was really embarrassing at the time. But on my first film, I got an autograph book. <gasps> oh, that's, that's and I'm, I was really embarrassed at the time, but I'm so glad I did this. And so I, 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 just like at the end of the year when you have your yearbook, I'd have people sign it. And I have all, everybody. I have like Floch Brol, John Houston, Glenn oh, Ford. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, could you sign my forehead, please? <laughs> well, do you, no, but do you, I was just doing it for memorabilia. And but, now I can't believe I have those. Did you do that throughout your career? Legacy, yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, have Glenn and then I moved oh on to actually having them sign a photograph. Oh. Wow. Because I went to, to Sally Kellerman's house, and she had all these pictures in her kitchen. And she said, you know, you'll be happy that you did this. I started having everybody sign photographs. And so I've done that. So I have, like, pictures of signed with J. Lee Thompson and... and uh, John Houston and I'm so glad I did it now. Oh yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, and Roddy then, McDowell had a whole bathroom that he had people. Roddy sign McDowell, and, yeah. I had I asked him to write a letter for my green card, and I have a I have oh, one from man. him. I have one wow. from John Houston for my green card. I can't believe I went up and I asked these people, would you, would you mind writing a letter to immigration for me for my my green card? <laughs> That's so wow. fantastic. But Roddy awesome. McDowell would get that because he is an yeah. immigrant. Yeah, now, yeah. Now and you our, still have these letters, right? I still have oh, them. Yeah. Now, just for our listeners, Roddy McDowell is not in Happy Birthday to <laughs> no, me. That's yeah, because cool they were was, confused but... about that. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying because you know I know. Lisa yeah, our listeners have never and... seen no, Happy Birthday well, to I, me. Well, but, 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 but one of the best lines in Happy Birthday to me was, you know, you have to have these medicals before, like a lot of these films, so you, you, you pass the insurance. And yeah. I, I don't know where I was, but I wasn't there. But Leslie Donaldson tells this story, and so they were all in the waiting room. For this doctor and Jack Bloom comes in, you know the actor Jack Bloom, mm-hmm. and says, "Where's the party?" And Lenore Zan at that time had this whole career playing Marilyn Monroe, so she did this Marilyn Monroe voice when he says, "So where's the party?" And she said, "Well, it's certainly not up your ass because you'd be feeling it." <laughs> <laughs> I'll be using and now that she's the a member week. of Parliament in Canada. Oh. Wow! Oh. Don't we love her? We do. Yes, we do. So you were you were killed. With the scene was actually filmed. I got the yes. I so got you, the axe in the head, and the other like what Lee Thompson would do. He'd carry around this styrofoam cup filled with blood. Uh huh. And he'd he they'd shoot it and he'd throw the blood and say, <laughs> oh. "We need more it's blood." Cool. And I thought he was out of his mind, but he was right. Wow. So yeah, yeah, and and what happened to me is, you know, I'm not actually a natural blonde anymore. Oh, some people know this. I, I no, yeah. no, not now, now everybody knows. You know, maybe, <laughs> you, know, you, you know, um, but anyway, with that blood in my scene, it colored my hair. <gasps> Like oh, it, because no. like my hair was processed. Right. And I couldn't get the red out. No way. Yeah, yeah. Did that then lead to class of 1984? <laughs> yeah. It would have been convenient. Couldn't, couldn't get that color out either. If I was smarty yeah. at the time, I don't know what, what I was thinking. I should have worn a wig. Okay, class of 1984. This yeah. is. We, I we, know some people are huge fans, others are not necessarily. Oh, I've never fans. heard of people who weren't fans. Why aren't they fans? Well, he, he's no. a little squeamish. I like to know. No, <laughs> he's no, a little squeamish. You know, it, it, the whole punk inquiring thing, minds want to. It, it just, you know, it, it was a little just a little too disturbing for me. I, I wasn't really? really a big oh, fan of those. Oh, if it's if it's disturbing, and... that doesn't bother me. I thought you meant like on another level. Oh like no. No, 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 And also for 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 punk kids, I mean, it's weird. It kind of has this cross. Okay, okay. So these punk kids who are at this school who are kind of terrorizing the teacher and, and all their classmates. and Blackboard and, Jungle. Yeah, it's it, Blackboard it, it, Jungle, it was, yeah. yeah. It's an 80s version of Blackboard with, with Jungle. With how brilliant to bring in Roddy McDowell. Right. Well, it's so good. Love Roddy yeah. McDowell. So good. I, I love this movie. wasn't he good in that movie? He is. That he is guy. The, and I got to do a scene opposite him. Yes. Well, that, that scene that, where that, he's that's where it gets yeah. really scary. got a gun when, to you. When, yeah. when you're with a, an actor that you know that they can get right in touch with their soul and be in the moment and be vulnerable. <laughs> and so... You're going. I can't be distracted by any of that because that means I'll be acting. I got to really just right. think of the story. <laughs> yeah, and that, that for me that was a very scary scene because yeah, what does one do when they've got a gun to their head and there's a maniac 
and you've got to get the right answer. Yeah, and this that is a teacher a that has been a very hard yeah. scene for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, he holds the, he holds this, his class at gunpoint. Yeah, he's he's been pushed to the yes. brink. Well, the, well, yeah. punk, what they yeah. did to the, the punk the animals, gang yeah. has killed yeah. his animals that he keeps From in his classroom. Class, yeah. And so he has gone over the brink, and now he's got a gun, and he's teaching class at gunpoint, and. Doing very well. <laughs> you guys you know, get the right answer. You know, in LA, he'd be tenured. So he would, okay, he would, oh, the unions. He would lose his job. <laughs> you know, but when we started that movie, I thought, oh, I live in Canada, and this is so far fetched. Where would they have, like, you know, people carrying guns to yeah, school? Yeah, typical right. day now, yeah. Where would that happen? No. No, this was directed by Mark Lester. He he did brought us such classics as, like, Roller Boogie with Roller Linda. Boogie, yeah. yeah, with Linda Blair, Firestarter with Drew Barrymore, and um, Tom Holland's script. Yeah, yeah, Tom right. Holland script. Tom Holland, Tom Holland who was Tom a guest. Ho- who was right. a guest on our Tom show. Holland. That's right. Yes. Now, where yes. was it shot? It was shot in Toronto. Okay. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. And yeah. you played Patsy the Punk. Yeah, and they originally Ain't... brought me in for uh, Michael Fox's friend, the, <gasps> the girl next door. Oh, the, the oh, okay. clarinet player. And, oh. and, and I said, please. Yeah. I'm yeah. just so tired of playing the girl next door. <laughs> I don't even have to open my mouth to do these parts. Mm-hmm. I, please. You shouldn't have said that. And they said, but we just don't, <laughs> we just don't, we don't, we just don't see you that way. I said, look, I've got four older brothers, and they've got friends. I can, I can be those. And, I've seen those kind of people. I can do it. And they said, okay, come back, and if you can do it. And I came back, and I got the part. And, and you, you own that role. Like I mean, you yeah. stand out yes. so much. Yeah. You're pretty annoying. You are, you're like there are little touches yeah. that you yeah. do. I would say you and drugstore are the most interesting of that group. And mm. and you know what? We were the most like the people that weren't given any dialogue. And that was the first time that I gave myself the permission. Because I used to always, you know, Canadians, we do what we're told, okay? Okay, We like to sure. follow rules. The big Canadian joke is, how do you get 100 Canadians out of the pool? Would you please get out of the pool now? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I never felt I had the permission to to improvise or do And so I, I'm looking at this character, and I'm just there all the time. And so right. every movement that I do, like, whether it's this or this or jumping around while they're getting killed – is all what I made up. And anything I say, like, I like to watch, because I had no dialogue. And it was wow. very frustrating because the, the stunt coordinator was Terry Leonard, the guy who had done the, uh, for Indiana Jones, like, he climbed underneath the stagecoach. Oh, oh yeah. So he's wow. very well known uh-huh. now. Yeah. And so anytime there was a fight scene, I was not included. And I, I just did not get that because uh-huh. I'm part of the gang. So I had to find something to do. Mm-hmm. And the only time... Uh, there's two times I excluded myself, and they were for f- safety reasons. One is when they had that big rumble underneath the um, yeah uh, between the, bridges, the two gangs. Yeah, yeah. The two bridges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it was raining and freezing cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed in the trailer because they never gave me anything to do anyway. And I read Shelley Winter's uh, biography. Oh, that's oh, what wow. I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Patsy was read that, Fun but memory. the other scene where I, I, you don't see me is in that punk dancing where they're slamming one sure. another. Matt's favorite scene. Not, I not my favorite scene. No, I, you're I, Mr. Punk. I, I grew up, like I said, with four brothers who were notorious in the town, and they were the type where, like, you don't want to date her. You know who her brothers are. Mm-hmm. But now I'm in the big city, and they don't know. I don't have my brothers with me, and I'm I'm wearing like colors. And punks at that time were only wearing in in Toronto black and white. Yeah. Did, did they so use these employ real, some real they, real punk? They didn't kids? have any professional actors. They are all real people. And wow, the punk really? girls were saying to me. You know what? You're not real. We're going to get you. We're going to get you when you're by yourself. <gasps> yeah. We're, you? we're going to get you when you're by yourself. And no gonna, way. Oh <laughs> of course you're not real. You're an actress in a fucking movie. <laughs> so so I knew when they had that dance scene yeah. that I would get it. Yeah. Right, right. So I made myself very scarce. You, I, I hid during that. So you, you do not see me in, the, in that scene. But that's right. because I was scared. Weren't these Canadian punks? Oh, all well, that's a was, very good point. <laughs> please, please don't come get me. Yeah. 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 When, when they meant they're going to get you, they're going to be very rude. <laughs> There's going to be some no, coarse no, language. No, no, no. These, these, these were like uh, women from Locked Up. Oh, locked up okay. raw. Okay. They, they were the women from locked up from raw. raw. Wow, locked up raw. That's yeah. that's what they were, and it, it's kind of like I had a feeling. But you know, I've watched that film, and I looked at some of the punks because I was I was into the whole. I was I was into that. Yeah, at that, that time, that's Matt scene. And and I looked at those guys, and I was like, these guys aren't the most punk guys either. I mean, even <laughs> the band Teenage Head that they got for the movie. 
not the most punk band you've ever heard. Well, the Canadian punk, eh? Hey, you know what, Matt? To, for me, though, that that was kind of a scary punk thing. But but <laughs> wow, but, yeah, but I'm true. glad you but, never but, went but, to a no, real but, punk. But I will, but I will no, say this right. though: it I was, scary for it, us. I, 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 it was a little weird. I mean, I mean, you had a lot of like makeup and glitter. I mean, it was kind of yeah, like people are threatening you. That was wrong. I knew that was wrong. But let's face it: my makeup artist, she was like. Looks like she's in her fifties, and I'm thinking, she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> the head makeup artist, he was like, you know, gay and he, like in his sixties, and, and he hired her. And I'm thinking, I remember you from commercials, and you do really great natural makeup. And then here don't we, tell me about Puck. I know Puck. Here, here, here was the horror story of all horror stories. So. So she's doing my makeup, and the, the poor woman, all, all this stuff was going on in her, in her life, and she actually apologized to me later because she lost her house. And mm-hmm. going, so while this was all going on in her personal life, it was affecting her professional life. So she started asking me, like, so, like, I'd get in a chair in the morning, so w- what makeup were you wearing in that scene? What? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I said, uh, really? don't, don't you have the Polaroids? I lost them. Oh. oh. Then, then the next level was one time she lost her whole makeup kit. Huh. I, st- I, I, st- I went to the, the med- head makeup artist and I, wow. st- I started crying. Really? Oh my because God. it was like, it, it, it was a matter of being an artist and, and, and matching. Yeah, I thought it was pretty wild, the kind of makeup and not realistic at all. Yeah. Um, it was more like new wave punk than it like was, hardcore it, 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 glam. I, it, it, you yeah. know, it was like, okay, let's, let's go with this. It's like a clockwork orange. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wish I kept the costumes now. Yeah. I uh, me too. <laughs> because my, I'd be my, wearing my, it right my now. My son, who's fifteen, we've we've now said that now on Friday, Saturday night is is uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. But on Friday night, so we should start doing classes on TV four, oh, yes. and we could all get dressed up. Yes, but I don't have my whatever that <laughs> that shoulder. Wing but can I just say, for <laughs> as much as you know, maybe you weren't whatever is considered punk at that time. Mm. Timothy Van Patten, who I love in that movie. Yeah. Let's, directs uh, Boardwalk. Yeah. And he's, he's great. Yeah. I love him. How he was dressed in that thing? <laughs> so, he's supposed to be punk, you know, head he, of the no, band. No, he, he whamish. He yeah. wanted to be, he, no, he wanted that. He yeah, did not. He wanted really. that. He, 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 he wanted to be more sophisticated and kind of like <laughs> the guy who plays the piano, right? right. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. He did not. And he, he also really didn't want to be an actor anymore at that point. Really? He really? Was, he's so good he, in that, He was though. doing decathlons. He, wow. he so didn't want to be acting. And I remember uh, him saying, yeah, they want me to fly back to L.A. to audition for Grease with Michelle Pfeiffer. I so don't want to do that. He did not. He was not interested at all. Really? Wow. And so I'm really glad that he found something that he liked. Yeah. And I really yeah, yeah. liked him. And, and he was so empathetic. And it was a really hard role, I think, for him to play the balance between, you know, playing somebody who's that... You know, obviously, very really high Q, but kind of crazy, and, yeah. And, yeah. Fool, and fooling people. You know, yeah. you know the right people, and, and that and, level and of charm kept going too. Wrong there too, because it was it was just like such a, a bad production. Um, oh, so you didn't ha- you didn't have a good time on that? that oh, it was one of the most unhappy experiences. Of my really? Life. really? Yeah, yeah. Because first of all, I've never been paid any residuals for that film. I, wow. I don't know the Americans, but like DVD and and, and like I'm saying it now, and and that's why I, I have a big resentment because like you know DVD and VHS and all that stuff and television never, yeah. and we were lied to and and the extras were treated really badly, exploited and like they literally that their craft table was a vat of jam, a vat of peanut butter and loaves of bread. <laughs> wow, just so God. awful, it's terrible. And, and so like Tim Van Patten and I would go like all the time like oh, this, is, this is just so awful. And, like that girl in the Coke scene when she had to take off her clothes. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want to be doing that. Oh. But somehow she'd agree to it. And I remember the makeup artist, who was my makeup artist, making her up and saying, Look, nobody's going to ever recognize you. They're not going to see you. They're not going to recognize you after I get done with your makeup. And so when she <laughs> kind of defeats ta- the purpose. She, when, she, when, <laughs> yeah. when she was taking off her clothes, she was trembling. Oh. And. And and so of course I made up the line I like to watch or make her take her clothes off. Yeah. But it felt so painful for me to say that. Wow. And it was it, it was like the wild wild west. Like for example, when Roddy McDowell was driving that car. Yeah. Yes. I was running for real for fear of my <laughs> really? life. Really. Because he was not a stunt driver. That's right. I remember Tom Holly had told us on our show that. Ryan McDowell wanted to do a lot of the driving himself. himself. So he was actually driving the car. And I was actually running for my life. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that would not happen with the Screen Actors Guild in the United States. No. Right. Uh, you know, the Let's union out there is much more powerful now. They, they, they have like regulations about news scenes and, and stunts and right. all that stuff, but they, they didn't then. And so that, it, I, I, I was very un, unhappy. 
because also it, it just I was used to working with directors who knew what they wanted and you know this, the the indecision and and what's interesting about drugstore is I was actually af- I told him this recently on Facebook I was actually afraid of you I thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought he was the real thing wow. I did and and Keith Knight actually didn't have that part initially there was another guy cast who was much more buff and I don't know how this happened because you would think that. Again, he would have been told at the audition. But when after he got the part, they said he had to shave his head. He wouldn't oh. do it. Ooh. And I guess, you know, he thought they'd still have him. He said, I'm not shaving my head. And they replaced him with Keith, mm. who I love. Who's yeah. great. It's like yeah. a, this, this ox of a man, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the other guy was like buff ox. Oh, okay. Right. And, it's funny now watching Michael J. Fox in that because... Well, he was Michael Fox. Michael yeah, Fox yeah Michael Fox. Because he's so sort... He's got this baby fat. Yeah. And then he lost yeah. Baby almost. fat, but he was smoking and drinking like there was no... <gasps> <tomorrow. laughs> really? no. Wow. It's like, are you really doing this or is it because you look so baby faced and you're so short and you're just trying to, wow. you know... But he was, a, wow. he's, he was a really, really nice guy, but I was thinking... Okay, are you doing this because you like it and it's for real, or are you doing this because you're so short and you know, baby? <laughs> trying to front a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, I, right. I, I never knew, he, but he, he was really nice. He was everybody... saying, nah, I could have been one of the punks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody is just so solid, though, in that movie. That's yeah, the I thing mean, is that I, 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 acting across the board, yeah. I love everybody. Neil, Neil Clifford. Here's another really unhappy moment. The guy's wife is at the hospital having their first baby and they won't let him leave the set. Oh. oh no. You know, that's the kind of, so it was wow. so, you know, this pent up unhappiness that we all had. Well, I mean, regardless of all the turmoil behind the cameras, I mean, the end result, I mean, the movie is a really, I mean, it's a, well, it's a really good movie. It's a cult and classic. You're, you're so is. memorable. And you are you really, really are. memorable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. like, really stand like out. that is a character that you are just riveted to from the beginning that, to that the end. That feels really yeah. good because I was really afraid when that movie came out and I was, you're again, so scary. Really, really afraid of my people that I worked with, with Claude Chabrol, like what they would think. And I remember them saying, you are really good, you know. And, <laughs> you know, that's because you're French and I'm playing Americana. But the biggest compliment I got it was recently uh, Stefan Arngrim uh, Facebook me and he says he's been in touch with his girl who uh, is an artist and has given him some great art uh, on Class of 1984 and she said that when she gets down, she just takes out her inner patsy. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and then what's great. really funny too is my 15 year old he shows on his phone he has a picture of me as Patsy and he, said, he always says to people this is my mother <laughs> you're right. you awesome. are you yeah. are the mixture of sexiness and how terrifying your character that's is that's really who I am but people uh, <laughs> cast me the other way and like my manager knows that that's part of me and my brothers and especially my mother know knows me like that. And as this friend of mine said, Lisa, everyone thinks you're really nice, but you're actually really mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would like to jump now to Killer Giant Rats. Yeah. <laughs> the movie that made me move to the United States. Oh, All right. A lot of rats in Canada. <laughs> 1982, no, 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 Let's face it. I, I, it's very complimentary because it's the only film that's been shot in the whole of Canada at the time. Because at the time, like, the films were very seasonal. It was only done in the summertime. Mm-hmm. And there, there wasn't a big industry, so they were only in the summer. And this is so this is January, the only film you shot in the entire country. So I'm very, it's very flattering, but... Let's face it, it's Dashens dressed up in rat costumes. <laughs> okay, wait, let's say this is... Surprisingly effective. Is, this is yeah. Deadly deadly Eyes. Deadly Eyes. And we used to be called The Rats. Yeah. Also, yeah. also yeah. known and as The Rats. And Charles Eggley, who rats. wrote it, wrote The Shield. Oh. That's right. Mm-hmm. This is based on a lot James of, Herbert, uh, right? I think yeah. James, novel, James yeah. Herbert book. Called The Rats. And another right. great director, Robert Klaus. Uh, who, when I was right. working with him, I had no idea who he was. So I, I, I didn't get the connection that on the mark he had said, Enter the Dragon. Right. He directed uh, the I just Bruce thought, like, it's, oh, yeah, of course. When I went on all those dates at the drive in, they had, like, <laughs> the game you know, of death. Playing. Yes, yes. I, I, I never made the connection until flash forward 20 years, and I'm in LA, and this Asian actor friend of mine said, you work with Robert Klaus? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He goes, he did. He directed Enter the Dragon. <laughs> I, I had no idea. But again, he just met you and he always knew what he wanted. You know, there was no question after you did a take, nothing. It, it's just so easy. And it's like Claude Chabrol said, it's like a picnic. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and when I was so unhappy on It Rained All Night, the day I left, on my way back, 
I stopped in Paris and I called Claude, but he couldn't get together. And I told him how unhappy it had been. And he said, you really have to watch who you work with because it will make you hate your craft. Mm. And I understand that now. At the time, I didn't. Mm. But he's absolutely right. Because I, I didn't like my craft on some of my films, like on a class of 1984. I, I didn't like it. But no, not on no. Deadly Eyes. Deadly Eyes. Yeah. How are the dachshunds to work? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> the, the premise of this, though, which is... Did you know, I'm sorry, but one of the dachshunds had a heart attack and died. Oh, oh great. No. No. What the Thanks, Lisa. Again, again, great. again th- this would not happen in the United States because of the SPCA. But it was the, yeah. At the time, it was the Wild Wild West in no. Canada. Which one was it? Was it Sparky? <laughs> You heard it here I, I, first, I don't folks. Know, but here, here's, on here, here, here's the tragedy. Yeah. See, rodents walk a certain way, right? They just like scurry along. Sure. Dogs trot. Right. Okay? Right. So the first time I saw these rats, it was in the movie theater, right? Yeah. And what they had to do, because they are all wearing costumes, mm-hmm. right? And so the two things would happen, you know, like a dog, you put anything on its head, and they're they keep flicking their head on the side, mm-hmm. right? So that didn't quite work. So I, it was they, they put everything in, in kind of like a dark lighting. But they trot. And to get them to move all at once, they, they had raw meat. Because they couldn't see. Like other dogs are trained and they, they, the trainer can tell them, come this way or they do a certain sign. But these dogs had costumes on and couldn't see so they put out raw meat and mm-hmm. so they ran towards the smell mm-hmm. well I have a strong sense wow. of smell you know that yeah. could have that could have worked with real rats you know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that works for me with cooked meat <laughs> but no but because the idea was that there's these dog sized rats overtaking the city right. and killing people I mean and this is pre-CGI this pre-CGI is all this stuff. I and, know practical but, but there are um, shots in the movie where you see the you know dogs dressed as rats <laughs> Um, in the same shots going after the actors, and it's startling because like you're like, holy fuck! It's like this. Yeah, your mind rat. jumps like, to this is I, real. I think for the most part, it works really well. And then, I agree. You know, no, it, it really, it really does. And you know, we all hate rodents, and it was my ultimate nightmare because you know, growing up with a single mother, you know, we weren't always flush. And I remember this one house we lived in, we did have rats. Okay. Oh. So for years, I had nightmares about rats. Wow. And so then I ended up in a movie about rats. But it was really the movie that it was said, you know, it's time to move to the United States. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're, you're, but again, it's all these Americans making movies up there. Right. Lisa, and it you're, was you're, Scatman Crothers. That's, oh, yeah. That, yeah. That's, that, that's how they get you. It's like <laughs> Glenn Ford. John Houston, Scat Scat Man, Scat Man Brothers. Brothers. It's like that carrot. You call right, right. If they're doing the movie, it must be good. Did you get to meet him and hang with him? I, I didn't get to hang with him, but I and I didn't have any scenes with him. But just like Glenn Ford, you better believe it. I went to the set to watch them work. Yeah, yes. right. That's awesome. And, you know, for a movie about giant rats attacking people, this movie really delivers. It does not skip on the rat attacks. I mean, <laughs> it's great. It, it's, it, it's really it, fun. It carries off a baby. Come on. I was yeah, like, yeah, I, am, well, I am in and, for this and, one and all the way through. Just like a James Cameron movie, there's always a love story. Yeah. That's true. Oh, so, yeah, so for those your, your people who don't like movie. horror movies, you know, or sci-fi, the secret is to always have a love story. Yeah, and you play you play this uh, student to Sam Groom. Who's it's a pre-Patsy, teacher. right? It's a pre-Patsy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like you're 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 very much enamored by the older man, so you're kind of trying to seduce Sam Groom. Yeah, but he wasn't David of... Hemmings. <laughs> oh, <but laughs> right. Those scenes play very well. But yeah, yeah. it really Thank does you. work well. Yeah. No, it's and, a really and it's fun Sarah film. Bosford, like you know, here she was like a Broadway actress. I I've embraced this whole thing now because you know, for years it was like I got this all these accolades because of these great auteur directors I work with. But with the advent of Facebook, I've realized that there's this whole cult movement, and I, I finally embraced it because I, I went to the screening and it was like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and everybody's having a great time, <laughs> and I'm having the best time of my life, better than with any of these auteur directors with. This whole horror movement. It's we, a fun movie. Yeah, and we go we go to these movies going, okay, so already we're there with giant rats attacking people. <laughs> but now yeah. you've got really good actors in there as well, right. and yeah. it brings this whole thing to life. And yeah. that's what really we love does. about those films. <laughs> you had me a giant rat. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the thing that blew me away was in the trailer. One of the things they have to say is the world's rat population is estimated at 108 billion. <laughs> you know, but because it's it's like class of 1984, it's, it's like we can see that as being true because we always hear about these 
giant rats yeah, that are in the New York subway system. How about, how about the pizza rat? Pizza rat that's on uh, YouTube. Sure, the YouTube. Pizza, pizza rat. Yeah. I, I, like, miss, I miss pizza rat. It's, it's, like, a, it's pizza like a YouTube rat. thing where there's like, was it in New York? Yeah. And there's this, this rat that like grabs a slice of pizza and off the street. it's a gigantic piece Big, of pizza. giant wow. piece. And just carries it off like it's nothing. <laughs> No, wow. it's that, that, Maybe it was a dachshund. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I've seen those where I grew up, like in this one house that my mother had. And it's wow. like, okay, um, how did that loaf of bread disappear <laughs> oh. off oh the my kitchen God. that was there last night? Oy. Yeah. It's, so I, ha- I had this phobia about rats. Well, Lisa, you were spared. I mean, I think that there was this close-up shot of you having been a casualty of the rats. Yeah, it's always this question because it's the same <laughs> thing. Like in, in a class of 1984, was I dead or was yeah. I? Right. I was a little yeah. unsure Happy birthday well. to me. Was right. I dead or wasn't yeah, I dead? It's like yeah. a recurring motif. It, it, it's, like, it, it's like I'm almost like always one of the pseudo survivors. Right. Like, do, yeah. is she dead? or Because it, like, it was almost like I, what I really wanted, what I said to somebody once is, wouldn't it be great in the sequel of Class of 1984 mm-hmm. if Patsy came back and she was a Republican? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You know, and, and, and like, you know, yeah, happy birthday to me. We don't, you know, I ended up right. being a survivor. The only one I think I ended up dying in is phobia. True. Right. I'm always somebody who survives. Right, yeah. Be- yeah, because it's true. like you're unconscious, because apparently you fell down the stairs of the movie, but you don't see a close-up in Deadly Eyes, but you don't see a, a, a close-up of the rats chewing on you, which no. every other casualty has that close-up, right. which is one of the awesome things about the movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. In my Deadly Eyes fan fiction that I've written, <laughs> you get up and save everyone else. <laughs> Okay, um, I would like to jump to a movie that I don't know if you maybe if you've talked about much, and I'm curious about this because I don't think this movie was a big hit, and um, well, let's, let's it was not really it. horror or sci-fi, <laughs> but it, it was kind of I guess you could say sci-fi fantasy comedy. Wait, wait, wait oh, how yeah. many syllables? Wait, <laughs> oh, uh, here, here it comes. Um, this, this, was, this is some I know you're this one. you're really familiar. 1983, the man who wasn't there. That, that's, the man that, who wasn't in my there. Ex- okay, so it's not a horror film, but in my experience, it was the oh. worst horror of my oh. life. Now, this, really? this was a Steve Gutenberg comedy. Worse than 1984? In, in, in 3D. <laughs> wow. In 3D. Well, it was supposed, to, I guess, to be this kind of like wacky okay. kind of comedy. Only film I cried on. <gasps> and the oh. producer said, why are you crying? And I said, the fact that you don't know why I'm crying is why I'm crying. Wow. It was supposed to be my big break. It was... You know, every ten years, 3D comes out again, as you know, in yeah. another reincarnation. Right. Another, this was the, during the resurgence again of that. Yeah, and it was it was Paramount's attempt to battle Jaws, Universal's Jaws 3D. So right. it was a comedy 3D, and I screen tested against people like Jennifer Jason Leigh and Christy Brinkley. So I lucked wow. out by getting it. Yeah, ah, lucky you. <laughs> yeah. And while I'm screen testing, everybody's killing themselves laughing, and I'm thinking this is not funny. But it was the 80s, and everybody was on cocaine. Oh my oh. gosh. So Everything was funny. Wow, <laughs> that, that makes sense now. That, now that I've yes. seen the movie. Now, now, now oh. Steve, Steve Goodberg was Good not days. not on cocaine, but I think everybody else was. Right. And when I started crying was we were in Washington D.C. and the DP was on the ground in the middle of the road, like having a baby tantrum. And I thought I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe wow. this. And I, w- I should just start crying. I went to my trailer, and the producer came and said, "Why are you crying?" And I said, "The fact that you do not know I'm crying is why I'm well, crying." The thing about the movie is too is like, oh, and they li- the, the other thing is it was the biggest me- biggest lie misrepresentation of my life. Yeah. We, and the movie too, you watch it. The premise you think would be this kind of lighthearted caper action mystery film but it's rated R and there's like there's some fairly graphic violence and there's a lot of nudity there's a lot of nudity yeah. but yeah. not not the kind of but elements that in any other kind salacious. of movie very yeah. salacious you're, you're actually nude a lot in the movie yeah. and I was, here's what here's what happened they said it's only going to be in silhouette <laughs> wow is that not okay. the case now, now now let me tell you this okay so I'm believing them I'm thinking this is a paramount picture they're not gonna lie right, right. Right. Yeah. and this is a Steve Gutenberg picture it's not gonna be salacious yeah. and so they said it's top secret nobody can come on the set we're not even letting entertainment tonight on the set ooh that's big <laughs> so my, <laughs> my boyfriend at the time was a, was a cinematographer and mm-hmm. I'm a cinematographer and they wouldn't even let him on the set really so I'm doing all this nude stuff because basically the idea is when you're invisible and they're you telling yes and they're telling me it has to be this bright on the set because it's 3D <laughs> but you're only going to be seen in silhouette right oh my god and maybe if I'd had stronger representation as agents I would have been more protecting my contract but I'm doing what I'm told because I'm an artiste I'd work with people in Europe where nudity is not an issue you're Canadian and I'm Canadian yeah. and I'm thinking 
it's Steve Gutenberg, it's a comedy, they don't need to exploit people, blah, 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 I'm believing everything. My first American studio picture. And I remember coming home one day and saying to my boyfriend, you know, it's 3D, but it's really bright on this set. But they said I'm going to be in silhouette. And he said, Lisa, the way it looks on the set is the way it's going to look on the screen. Mm. I've never, it's been so, it's never gone away. To this day, I go back to this like reunion and this guy that was like kind of the hunk high school guy and I was in ninth grade, he's 12th grade and I, I run into him and he's the same height as me now because he's wearing platform shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I go up to him and I go, aren't you blah, 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 blah. And he said, yeah, I can't remember. And he goes, you know, I saw you in that Invisible Man film. <laughs> and she, over all, all and movies. over. And the lifers from jail write you. Oh. And it's never oh, over. Oh my it's, gosh. And I just felt so lied to. And I was so, I was so unhappy. And it was the ultimate Hollywood. I got Hollywooded. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. and, and I, I gave my a, best effort. And it's a, that's the thing. It's a shame because you're really good in the film and you and Steve are really good together. And it could, yeah. it could have been like, it should have been a PG rated fun Action comedy, That's and they made I it salacious. It why, and they made it, was it really hard? if it had been insolent. How about this? I'll never forget this in my life. Two things. One thing, I'm on this McDonald's commercial, and this guy goes, "I remember you. I was with you in the man who wasn't there." <laughs> he goes, "I was one of the cops," and I realized he was the guy, one of the guys behind me, as I'm running up this, like on my hands and knees, this hill, and he's behind me, and I'm nude. <laughs> so there was that and then here's the other thing that they would never have gotten away with and also had I been kind of more of an assertive and less Canadian actor this never would have happened but so there's a scene with the lion remember that mm-hmm. okay so I'm at the zoo and so in my mind I'm okay with this before it happens mm-hmm. okay but remember this is the day of the um, oh god Jennifer Jason Lee's uh, uh, Fast Times Risen High no her father Vic Morrow okay this, oh, this was oh, the days of the yeah. big moral where everybody's taking these big chances. So I'm okay with this. Now, when it happened, my heart was just thumping, and I thought, I can't, this, this could happen to me. But I'm nude. The whole crew's on the other side of this wall, and I'm with a lion <laughs> no. by myself. No. <laughs> There's no mirror. There's no window between us. Oh. And I'm supposed to climb up this wall and get over. Mm-hmm. And I always wondered how I was going to do it. When that lion came opposite me, Yeah. I had no problems climbing. <laughs> oh, uh, right. And I can't believe that now, that there was not a stunt person, that I was or nude. Gonna, yeah, wow. yeah. The whole crew and the director were way far away on the other side of this <laughs> wow. you know, w- wall at the zoo. Mm-hmm. Wow. Come that's on. Crazy. I could have been mauled, and I would have been a Vic Morrow thing, too. Yeah, yeah. that's horrible. It, that's... It, you know, and it had I had stronger representation, I think that... You know, it, management and agents, that would never have happened to me. And the, the fact that they could take that chance with a lead actor and even yeah. think that, or the trainer. I mean, look what happened to those guys in Vegas. Sure. You know, yeah. 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 They, yeah. yeah. I could have been a Zig, Siegfried and Roy uh, and like, and like casualty. You said, and like you said, this is Paramount. It wasn't like this was some crazy little independent film. I mean, it was just Paramount Pictures, right. you know, with like big stuff. It had so to be and, and, and l- 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 Let's, you know, I can talk about this now because I'm older, but it was also that time of the month. Oh, no. We don't know know whether that's kind of folklore. Mm -hmm. Well, but let's just say it was, and I'm going to lie. Oh, (laughs) my God. Well, yeah. you, wow. Could wow. it just been a, a thing too of like during that time everyone was just so drugged out that they it's no one just, even thought of <laughs> yeah, safety really. and I don't know. It was like Steve and I, I think we're oh no, and Jeffrey Tambor. Mm. Yeah, well, no, yeah. Now here he's, here's the irony. Great. Yeah. Okay. So Jeffrey Tambor, like I can't tell you how many films I was in where there was a co star that was from a television series and they just wanted to be in films and I was in films. And every time they would turn to me and they'd say, Whatever you do, don't ever do a series because you will have no life. Over like every, t- <laughs> every they all did. So I never did, and and later on it did affect my career because people wanted you to have uh, TVQ. But Jeffrey was in that movie only because he wanted to get into features. Imagine mm. this guy, how big he is now. Right, right. And we hung out so much together. We had such a great time together. He kept me sane. He was not on drugs wow. either. He is very right. good in the movie. Yeah, he is good in the movie. Yeah, I mean, but he almost got cut out because you know that one scene where he's driving and he has to that, do that long monologue? Yeah. Uh-huh. They, they didn't have time accent. to shoot it and they were going to cut it out and he, he said, you can't do that. 
You 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 can't do. He goes. That's why I did this film. The, the, the whole reason I did this film was because of this monologue. You have to shoot it. <laughs> so they did. But I felt so bad for him that he had to beg to do this scene to be in the man and who this, wasn't there. And, 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 and then Art Art Hindle. Art Hindle oh, was yeah, in the. Yeah, yeah. He's great in the Brood. And I the, always the brood. see. I I had had a crush on Art Hindle since before I was even in the movies. Wow. And so I thought, oh my god! Like there was a couple times, like Christopher Plummer, Tony Curtis, and Art Hindle. <laughs> was, he, was he Canadian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, we, yeah. Well, wasn't he an Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Uh, yes, the remake. Right. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Oh wow. Well, you know, I will say that you have fantastic '80s hair in the man who wasn't there. That's true. Yes. You really yes. do. Yeah. You really I do. Fantastic. And I hated that hair too. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hated thanks that Sean hair. Thanks, Sean, for bringing it up. It's a little like <laughs> Princess Diana. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was like these, they gave me these hot rollers, and it was like. <laughs> I look like a soap opera actress. <laughs> and so then later when I start getting wetted down and not wearing as much makeup and everything, right, right. I remember the producer saying, you know, Lisa looks better. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I remember the crew referring to the makeup and hair people as the wrecking crew because they said I looked better <laughs> before I went into hair and makeup. Wow. <laughs> because, wow. you know, because of that big hair yeah. and all the makeup yeah, and everything yeah. else. Because, and I kept arguing with the makeup artist and she, she, she said, but I, I did Dallas. And I thought, that's exactly what I don't want to look like. <laughs> I don't want to look like her. Well, Lisa, you, you, you've done, you, you did punks, you did phobias, you did rats, <laughs> invisible people, but then... And cockroaches! That's the, yes. yes. Oh. This, The Nest. Another, yes. another vermin movie. 1988. 1988. So good. The I Nest. I love this movie. I love this movie. For a bunch of, of different reasons, I think. Another you know. very they're, they're mutant, experience. Really? Another. Mutant, <laughs> mutant killer cockroaches. And what could um, go wrong? There, there's a, <laughs> and there are there are a lot of cockroaches in this film. I don't know. There are. It's the Americans doing that to the Canadian again. Oh my God. <laughs> but you know, it's, 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 it's funny for my wife, I mean, who, who hates cockroaches. You know, she would just freak out at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, it's like little pets or something, but. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, this, uh, but this movie, though, this is a Roger Corman production. Yeah, right? and at, at the time, I, I didn't know who Roger Corman was. And so how he was described to me was, well, he's this low-budget filmmaker. Low-budget meant nothing to me because I, I'd worked on Canadian films that were low-budget and ended right, up being right. very great films, you know? Right. I see. It was great directors. <laughs> and then, then they, they threw names at me, like, oh, you know, Ron Howard got to start here and Scorsese and James Cameron. I'm thinking, oh, my <laughs> God, yes. They didn't smart. tell you it was 30 years before. No, no, yeah. no. no, no they, they omitted that part. And then also, like... You know, cockroaches. I, I I get these visions that it's going to be like the birds. Okay, <laughs> uh, right, right. And and so you know, I got the 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 casting director. They they just offered me the movie, and I, I said, no, I don't want to do it. You know, and, and they kept coming at me. So I, I had dinner with the director, and he, you know, he's a writer, and writers are really good at telling story and convincing you. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I didn't know what the, the Corman was, and I'm thinking this this could be the birds. Mm-hmm. So I say yes. Ah. And it quickly became evident that this was not, you know, the birds. <laughs> <laughs> and this was a different type of low budget that I'd ever been in, that people were acting low budget. And, but my agent at the time, and I had a really big agent at the time, so I thought she must know what she's doing because she, you know, to be submitting me on this because she represents the estate of Tennessee Williams and Elizabeth Taylor. And why would she put me up for a bad movie? She, but she did put it in my contract, no cockroaches by Lisa. Okay. okay. <laughs> and in the shower scene, I have to have a bodysuit on. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay. So there are no cockroaches around me. But when it gets to the shower scene, somehow the bodysuit isn't there that day. Go for huh. it. We misplaced it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just shoot it, Lisa. Okay. Well, I'm going to do like Phoebe Cates. Because I saw her, I heard her in an interview where she said, I think it was in Fast Times, it must have been something, but she put gaffer's tape over her breasts yeah. oh, to nice. make sure that they didn't right. show her breasts. Okay. So I thought, oh, I, I'm okay. I'm not going to be a difficult actress. You don't have the bo- bodysuit. I'm just going to put the gaffer's tape on. And then they put ran the out of gaffer's tape. tape. No, 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 they had it. <laughs> but they kept saying, they, after they'd shoot it, they said, you know, can you take the gaffer's tape off? We keep seeing the gaffer's tape. And I kept saying, if you're seeing the gaffer's tape, you're seeing too much. Oh. And it happened over and over and over again. So, you know, I'm back in my trailer and Julie Corman comes to me and she said, I heard you're being a difficult actress. <laughs> and I said, why? She goes, I hear you have a problem doing nudity. 
I said, I don't have a problem doing nudity. I did nudity for John Houston. And I said, but it's in my contract that I'm supposed to have a bodysuit, and you don't have one. And I'm wearing gaffer's tape. And if you're seeing the gaffer's tape, you're seeing too much. So she didn't say anything after that. But I, I just hate having to be that person. I, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not a no. difficult actress. Right, right. You guys are the ones breaking the rules. And it was just such an unhappy experience. I mean, the other thing that happened was the cameraman, DP, got, uh, he, he got out of line. He came up to me and he said, I think you're being flat in the scene. Whoa. What? A DP he, said that? Yeah. And I said, you're, you're tampering with me. And so to, to let him know what he was doing to me, I came up to him and I said, you know, I think this set is a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. Nice. He... They turned on me, that camera crew. Really? To the point where they had a Polaroid of me on the other side of the camera with a, um, it's the first time I'm telling this, but I can laugh about it now, with a, a Sharpie with an X through my face. Wow. Oh, my God. Talk That's about good. unprofessional. Yeah, yeah. And I, it really upset me because I was younger and much more Canadian. Cause I'm, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm American. I'm standing up for my rights. You know? Wow. But and I said something to the producer this one and she got really angry she pulled it away and it was so funny because the last day of shooting I took my headshot and I put an X through it and I gave it to the DP and I said you know until the next time <laughs> so I was hanging out with Sharon Stone at the time and she said what I would have done is I would have taken black tape and put it put it over my face in an X and walked on the set <laughs> and, and so it's like yeah yeah but you know what you're, you were the lead in that film when you carry the movie and you're really good in that oh yeah and so yeah. again again whatever turmoil was happening off camera oh turmoil yeah. they, they, they gave me these like false like Breast bra that kept falling down that looked like it had like hanging breasts. And it <laughs> didn't didn't and see that. Keep pulling up. It's like, why are you doing this? And there's now, a, now they will look worse. What about now? You had, what about the I like Frank Loves. He was he was one. I love that guy. And what about Robert Lansing? Because I love Robert Lansing. Was he? Well, how was he on the set? I mean, was he good to you? Was he was he kind of just kind of going with the motions? I can say it now. No, he yeah. passed away. Oh, yes. hear. Oh, I had to complain to him about my to my acting teacher because he was you know he kept talking about Saldano and like what are you talking about and he was irritable and not open and friendly and it's like what what do you you know what yeah and so I had to I you know he was very upsetting because he just he just seemed very he was not open and giving or warm at all. That really? seemed, seemed like he was oh. staying in character because his character in the movie oh, yeah, yeah, yeah a terrible horrible, so, horrible yeah. person. Yeah, but do you, do you have to be that way? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's it, a thing called like, acting. It, yeah, it's like Olivier yeah. said to uh, you know. Uh, Dustin, Dustin Hoffman, why don't you try acting, dear boy? Right. <laughs> right. No, but that's what he said. Yes, that's right. Do they no. keep the roaches away from you at least? I never saw any roaches. Oh, no, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. No, but but it's it's really interesting that an agent would think of well, she did. She she said bodysuit, but the fact that they honored the cockroaches, but not my nudity. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. very very culturally interesting. Yeah, but I I do appreciate the fact that that movie is it goes beyond just being like a. Nature Gone Amok movie because it gets into mutant monster like it's yeah. kind of, it goes into like I think Terry Winkless did, did a great job yeah I mean yeah, yeah. Great and, and, and there, there, there was great humor to it yeah, oh, yeah 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 which I was unsure about how to play it myself because with a lot of those movies there's the people that are playing it real and then there's the people that are being camp a over top yeah. right yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, yeah and we know, all know who those people are <laughs> yes <though>. we do <laughs> yeah and and so you're never. From the audience's point of view, I, I don't know whether they're appreciating the camp performances or not. I don't. Well, you kind of grounded they, it. I think. Yeah, you I mean, grounded I, the film. I think most of the Mel Gibson thing going about you. Yeah, the whole time <laughs> I've been I here, swear, I've been I love the Jews. I have no problem. <laughs> 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 the whole time I was thinking, what actor does he remind me of? Yeah, yeah, pre uh, the breakdown. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, but it, self destruction. But some of the special effects, and it may not be yeah, the most. It's, 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 it's very it's, ambitious with his. Yeah, effects. I mean, I mean, but yeah. it, it's what, are it, special? there special? Yeah, uh, there's special. Yeah, there's yeah. It, it may not be. It, it may not be the drink? the most expensive. <laughs> yes, you but may. But it is kind of fun that they do yeah. some practical stuff, which Come on. is yeah. another film where I've never received a residual. Oh. Oh. I can say that now. Wow. Well, it's Roger Corman, so it was non union, wasn't it? Or no, it was, it was Screen Actors oh, Guild. Wow. What is no, but, no, but So, it's, I, you it's know, Roger all those Corman. DVDs, <laughs> well, all those DVDs and VHS, where did the money go? Wow. Wow. Really? Wow. You know, and it's, it's like, why, why do you have to do that? Mm, why yes. do you? Yeah. It, you know, we're artists, and it, it just kills our souls. 
It just yeah, kills yeah. us. Well, things are changing, though. Yeah. Really better, right? Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. And, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, the Screen Actors Guild does not have uh, an agreement for new media. That's right. It's one of the, like, oh. the, the Union Canada does. What, what's wrong, you know, with that? Well, the technology's moving so quickly that you've right. got to catch up. That's yeah. Well, for this show... We had dinner, uh, some and drinks. drinks. Yes, right. It's yes. a good time. I will throw in and twenty some bucks. Swag. There you go. Yes. And there will be a release for you to sign. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you did you did this cockroaches thing, okay? But then, but then we get to another Smooth thing. Segue. No, no, no. That I, I, no, no, no say, I, I've always wanted you to get into outer space, which you do no, 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 eventually. No, but what, there was one other vermin yeah. movie, and I actually turned it down and did a, a play at the La Jolla Playhouse because I said to the same agent, "Look, if this film doesn't." Do well. That means I've been in three vermin movies. That are <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, what, 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 Jeff Goldblum and Daphne Zuniga. What the, was the, the fly too. The fly. No, the fly no, no, too. No, no. Right. So no, I'm but offer, you weren't in. I, I'm, no, 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 I'm offered. I'm offered to audition. Okay. And I said no. I'm going to do the play at the La Jolla Playhouse with Des Mackinoff directing or producing because if this film does not do well, I don't care if it's a Fox film. That will mean I've done three vermin films. <laughs> right. right. And right. that one, it was a good move because I don't think that film... Well, no, 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 that, no, no, that was smart. No, that was smart. No. But, you did, but you did eventually get into outer space with a film called <laughs> Transformation. <laughs> Same agent. From no. Same no. Agent. Are you serious? No, like, yeah, she, she, she represents like these great directors and like, you know, the state of Tennessee Williams and Elizabeth Taylor and what's his name? Ridley, not Ridley Scott, but another great director. So I'm thinking, no, no, she would never put me up for these films she must know what she's doing <laughs> so i say yes again yeah to transformations yeah i love the director uh, that's jay jay, jay Kamen. Kamen. But he never i mean that's his directing film that's the debut I, mean, I think right? that was yeah. his debut yeah he actually was the sound editor who uh, uh was the uh what do you call it predecessor of uh, my ex-husband very talented sound editor but again i i love if, if it's going to be a first time director yeah it's got to be an editor because they, they, right. they're, they're editing in their head. They know how to tell the story and everything else. Writers, they can't make decisions. They, they're watching the scenes. They, yeah. you know, right. They're they, thinking, they, they're second guessing things. And, oh, yeah. God. They can talk story. But yeah. Editors, right, right. they just cut to the chase. And I, right. I loved him. And, and, and Jay was so sensitive. But man, he, he was going through so much yeah. on that film. Well, this was kind of like. One of the last Empire Pictures movies where Empire was kind of in the middle of bankruptcy. Yeah. I think. This was like the last legs of Empire. I mean, the sets Again, were used on other movies. Corman yeah. and Empire, I had no idea. Yeah. I, I just didn't know. And like I said, I had this agent that I thought she, she wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't, you know, good. And But it was great. I went to Italy, but poor Jay, you know, um, he had an Italian crew that wasn't supportive. And for me, it was craziness because. Like the Italians, they, they loop everything. So I'll never forget. And I, I'm so glad I, I, I'd studied with the acting coach that I had because you had to be very focused for the you know the lengths of the scenes that we had to do in that scene. But I remember like I'm doing this scene and I'm thinking while I'm doing the scene, I, I'm hearing opera going on. Okay, let's just keep going with what's going on in the scene. But I'm And then an aria and a climax comes. And I'm thinking, I keep going with the scene and they call cut and I said... You know, I was hearing opera going on. <laughs> and so, like, the assistant camera said, oh, yeah, I forgot to turn my radio off. What? Wow. And they don't care yeah. because they're used to loop. And then another yeah. time, same thing. I'm doing a scene and I'm hearing birds chirping. Mm -hmm. And we're in the studio. Yeah. After it was over, it's like, I said, I'm hearing birds. Oh, yeah, some birds live up there. Why don't you get rid of them? <laughs> <laughs> it took ultimate, ultimate concentration. Wow. Yeah. Right. It seemed like it was a, they were kind of stretching every little bit of money they could. And yeah. the premise was very strange. Yeah, it's, it's a very Rex, strange. Rex Smith. Fr from, Pirates from Pirates of Penzance. And, and Street Hawk. Yeah, Street Hawk. Um, he's kind of like seduced by a space succubus. It was kind of like pre AIDS, right? It was like yeah, yeah, it was kind of like an AIDS allegory in a way. It was kind of like AIDS like allegory, AIDS, yes. Uh, like a disease that he's spreading on well, this mining colony yeah. in space, it, and you're like a, a doctor or a nurse who's like kind of falling for him, and it's a weird. He's like he's like getting boils on his skin. He's he's, he's going to transform into this monster. Yeah, but it's got. But it never got finished. I was surprised. It, it, I was. I, I saw it on Amazon. I was like, well, what? It got released. I had no <laughs> idea. It was even they even had enough footage. Sean, <laughs> Sean, it is a it is a film about unprotected sex. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. In it's space. Like, yeah. Alien you know, meets genital warts. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of like boils. Like class in this. of 1984. Like at the time, it's unbelievable.
unbelievable and then it happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I knew I was in trouble though in that film because I get there and I, I'm in Rome. It's like, you know, it's like kind of, you know, oh, it's shooting in Rome. Great, you know. So I'm bicycling, you know, because you want to get to you know your lead actor before you start shooting, especially if they're, uh, you know, uh, a love interest. So, we're, you know, we're bicycling by the Colosseum and Rex turns to me and says, have you read the script yet? <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> but but in, this, in this crazy movie, you've got Patrick McNee. Yeah. I mean, like, it's a as, weird as role, a bro. though. As a All right, another, he's stuck an, to the okay, chase. Okay, another older man that I hung out with, gay. Oh. Right? Very, It's another David wow. Hemmings experience for wow. me. I did yeah. not know Where that. Where we hang out together... And it, they're they're just these great gentlemen. They're 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 interesting. They're intelligent, and they're great actors. Did you have a crush on him too? Yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah, he, he's he's a classic. He's the greatest. He's, he's, he's we, we classic. Can, I, can I say this? Though? Wouldn't you have a crush on him? I pro- yeah, I, I probably I, again. Would. I do now. Yes. I, yeah. I, I love I love him. Giant Avengers fan. Oh, oh my god. Yes. But for his little church that he had in the white room. Yeah. Yes. How about a chair? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how old? Give him a chair. Is, you know, you bring up a good well, point. Well, Jay was really smart because he said, and you could tell he he comes from sound editing because he said there's this one other character, and it might have been Patrick McNee. I can't remember, but he had like a long monologue, and it was there's a lot of scientific things. He goes, "We're gonna have to cast a British actor in that <laughs> because if you say it with a British accent, it can, anything can work." Buy it. That's true. That's, <laughs> That's very true. true. But yeah, he was great, Patrick Mini. I'm I'm so when I think about the people I've gotten to work with, and you know, kind of didn't really realize who he was at the time. Just like when I work with you know on Murder She Wrote, I only knew her as Murder She Wrote from this. She was like the love boat for my mother, and then you know I saw these other movies she'd been in afterwards, and I'm so embarrassed now that I didn't (laughs) know that. That's who she was. Yeah, Manchurian candidate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. speaking of, you mentioned Christopher Plummer, and I think the next movie, uh, well, in the genre at least, after Transformations, was this, again, kind of probably a not too well known film. Mind Field. Field. Not Mind Field, Mind Field. C- mm-hmm. Can I just uh, interject here? Uh, gay, not gay. <laughs> Are you kidding me? All right. Okay. <laughs> Finally. Um, she but- shoots, she scores. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love when you talk hockey to me. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now Mind Field was a kind of a thriller, you know, kind of a thriller with do Michael. You have a hockey stick? I do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll find one. All right, all right, all right, guys, come on. He shoots, she scores. Yeah. Oh. Boom. Oh, Happy birthday yeah, yeah. to me. Oh. <laughs> but that, so anyway, yes, Sean. Uh, what is that film? Mind Field with uh, Michael, Mind Michael Field. Ironside, yeah. uh, which we love, who we love. What was the deal with that movie? Because that was kind of a thriller too. But it was well that that was a film that it was my first. Uh, I, I wasn't an ingenue anymore. I, you know, I turned thirty and I was being cast as as you know a, a leading woman. Not, right, you, not you played, I was no longer the daughter of the girlfriend. Right, you played a lawyer in this film, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, and um, I, it was based on a true story. And it was very interesting, but I knew I was in trouble when the uh, French director said to me, would you tell me whether Michael's performance is good? Because I can't understand. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Wow. wow. Like, Paul Chabot didn't even say that to me. Wow. So, so I knew that we were in trouble then. Right, Boy. right. Wow. And, and, the, and it's one of the things I have to say is that, see, Violette Nozia was so much better because it was a French story, true French story, than Blood Relatives, which was he was trying to make an American detective story. Right. And no one can make American stories like Americans. Right, no right. matter what genre it is, you can't, a non American cannot tell an American right, you can't story. You can emulate that yeah. style, right? And for years, when I first got here, I, there's certain American things I could not play because I, I, it's not a matter of knowing the lines or the accent, it's understanding the, when somebody says it's Fort Bragg. When I first got here, I remember there was a s- scene that it was somebody who was a somebody who had grown up as an army brat from Fort Bragg, and I didn't I, I knew the name Fort Bragg, but now I understand what that feels like. Right. Okay, right, right. Yeah. and so just like that film, you have a French Canadian director making really an American film, right. <clears throat> and it's just not going to fly. Just you know, Claude is a great director, but he, you know, to try for him to try and make an American Clute story, it's not going to work. Right, right, and. You know, it's casting. You got to cast the right director for. Right, it, sure. it was like you know, uh, on the Slugger's Wife. I'm sorry, Neil Simon is not a, a Hal Ashby fit. True, right? Yeah. 
and so it's sad because they're both really talented artists. Right, right. But not the right fit. It's alchemy. Right. It's chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really is. Uh, speaking of the slugger's wife, <laughs> there is a Terminator connection to that, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Now I heard a story. You know, it, it, it took years for me. I don't know why. Like, I would not admit to so many things for years. It was like on The Slugger's Wife. Like, I did my own voice, and they, you know, for years, I, I you know, I was so afraid of Ray Stark, I, I didn't tell the truth that somebody else's voice was used for Rebecca De Mornay's. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh. Really? The, the clue was, on the credits, there were three people listed for the singing, me, Rebecca, and somebody else. There were only two singers. No. <laughs> wow. So when I did the press junkets, and I get, I was so terrified, you know. I, I, I would get into the, the elevator at this press junket, and like the press would turn to me and say, so, did you do your own singing? I said, yes. And they say, did Rebecca do her own singing? And I'd say, as far as I know. Oh. <laughs> nice. I was so afraid. Sure, sure. Because I was dealing with these giants. Right. You know? yeah. And, you know, at one point, just everybody just gave up. They just gave up because they couldn't make the film that they wanted it to, to make. Right. And I guess Ray Stark, who was so powerful, just stuck to his guns. And I get so much more of it the older I get. I'll never forget, I, I, I went down to the coffee shop in the hotel, and I'm sitting there, and I look next to me, and there's Neil Simon with his head in his hands. No. <laughs> and it's because it had all gone wrong for him. And, and I just don't know how much I can say without hurting people's careers. I just, I still battle that the whole time. There's so many right. levels of that film that I, I just, I want to write Neil all the time and say, the older I get, the more I understand why you're heartbroken. And the more I understand why it didn't work with Hal and how, you know, it was so tragic what happened to Hal too. And I, w I was just so amazed that I got to work with him because before I moved to the United States, when, remember when Entertainment Tonight first came on, how exciting that was? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mary, yeah. And I, I'm watching Entertainment Tonight, and I'm with that same cinematographer boyfriend who said, if it looks that light on the set, that's how it looks on the screen. Mm -hmm. And Hal Ashby is being interviewed for this film he did, and I, I think being there, and I said, God, I'd love to work with Hal Ashby. And he said, you'll work with Hal Ashby one day. And I got to work with him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So now, during this time, though, they were casting Terminator, right? The Terminator. Yeah, so here's what happened. I went in to read for Terminator, and small film, unknown director. We auditioned at Gail and Hurd's house. She was like this really rich woman who had a house on Mulholland Drive, so we had the auditions at her house. And, you know, James Cameron was the boyfriend of this rich woman, and I didn't think anything of it. You know, he talked to me that he wanted to shoot it on the 401, which is like the 405 in Canada, and shut it down. I said, that's going to be quite a feat and all this stuff. And you know, I didn't think anything of it. And uh, then I got called back. And this time it was to, to read with the lead actor. And I had not, I, I remember thinking, this is odd that my agent would have me read for an episodic that same morning. So I wasn't quite as prepared as I'd like to be, mm -hmm. you know. I, I just didn't feel as in the moment. But anyway, what happened is um, my agent got the call and said, you know, Linda Hamilton had gotten the part and that Gail Ann Hurd had preferred me for the part. She felt that I had a lot more charisma. But I really felt that the way I looked at the time, mm -hmm. that uh, Linda Hamilton looked more like the mom waitress than I did. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that. And so yeah. it didn't really bother me. Yeah. So in the meantime, I get cast in this Hal Ashby film, where you start producing, uh, Quincy joined producing me all my my songs uh hal ashby you know and so then we get this call that linda hamilton had sprained her ankle very badly and they didn't want to wait for her and could i do the film and they were wow. shooting in florida and i was shooting in atlanta uh -huh. so i said yeah yeah i'll do that other film it's gonna be hard to do both because i had all this singing to do it wasn't the acting i had so much to prepare for all these songs and to dance and everything and this is like an act of God, I guess, because it turns out that the casting director on The Terminator was married to the driver captain on The Slugger's Wife. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so he looked at the master schedule and he said to the casting director, there is no way that Lisa is going to be able to do both films. So I had to choose. And I said to my agent, I said, Terminator is the better film. And he said, no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. The Neil Simon is the better film. And I said, no, Terminator's a better film. It's a better story. 
He said, you've got Neil Simon and Ray Stark and Hal Ashby. He said, this is an unknown director. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I said, it's the better film. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I ended up doing The Slugger's Wife. And years later, I ran into James Cameron at the Canadian consulate because he was being honored for get, being nominated. He, he too, was a born-again Canadian. <laughs> and I went up to him, and he remembered me. And I said, I told my agent at the time that it was the better film. He said, that's okay. He said, because had you done the film, I would never have met Linda. Mm. Well, that's true because yeah. they got they got married. Who who, yeah. who, who knew yeah. that he could be? Because he has his reputation of being such an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. But yeah. I'm telling you, he was one of the great directors too. He talked to me about story. I had that feeling he was just a great director. Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, he just doesn't go with unknowns anymore like he did then. No. Right. 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 No. Yeah. Right. You're he right, went with unknowns then. Uh, absolutely. I mean, other than Schwarzenegger, yeah, that movie was made up of all unknown people. Yeah. And Schwarzenegger yeah. was totally. a real. Roll of the dice too. Yeah, he was. Absolutely. He was really. Right. He, an, wasn't an uh, he, he wasn't right. an actor at all. Right. Well, James true. Cameron budget now would be like four billion dollars. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. But and that's a movie that even you know at its time it's so low budget, but it took a director like him to take every ounce, every dime, and put it up on the screen. Right. Yeah. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Roger Corman, right? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, especially yeah, in yeah. the sixties. <laughs> right, right. Was that when he worked with? James Cameron in the 60s? Well, I don't know about the James 60s. James Cameron but actually worked in a lot of early 80s uh, Corman yeah. stuff like Galaxy of Terror. Ba- uh, he worked uh, in the set decoration for yeah. that. Is that Battle right? Beyond yeah. Stars. yeah, Battle, Battle Beyond the Stars. stars. Yeah. He did a lot of the Which model work and stuff. So yeah. And if you watch a lot of But the, then he could do The Abyss. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and if you look at a lot of the early Edgar Allan Poe films... I the, was an Edgar Allan Poe. I know. How did you know that? Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Uh, but he, you know, Roger Corman did all these Edgar Allan Poe movies with Vincent Price. Yeah, there's yes. a series oh, yes. of them. Yeah. And they're, they're beautiful. Great. They're Is that right? beautiful. Yeah, you yeah. Check them out. Vincent yeah. was a movie star, too. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Lisa, um, you have done so much. I, I, I mean, but I want to do more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I, do I, I took a big hiatus there. I was going to say, after the hiatus, though, there's a movie kind of more recently that. Is a pretty crazy but pretty fun movie, which is Fire Serpent. Fire <laughs> Serpent. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let me tell you about that. Yeah. <laughs> Can tell you us. believe this? Same producers as Minefield. No. Really? What? Wow. Same producers as two Lifetime movies that I did. Uh, wow. Yeah. No, this is kind of this is like a, a pretty, cool, pretty so, so, way so, out so, premise. So, so that film, I got to tell you, when we talk about <clears throat> the nest, I auditioned for it. I did the audition one way on tape. I didn't meet the director. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, okay, do I do it like, is it is the character like to die for, like Nicole Kidman, or is the character, is it kind of, is this the char- the comedy element that there always is in horror, in sci-fi, like Terry Trees in the Cockroach movie? Right. Yes. So I chose to do it, not realistically, but kind of camp. You're playing this kind of like and aggressive, I like... I still don't know whether it was the right choice, because no, I'm watching it now and I'm going... For that kind of movie, though, yes. Sure. I think, because you're, play, I you're I playing this sure, very... I wasn't sure, and I kept saying to the director, and I didn't think the director got me. I said, okay, is No, it, you know, I think you're I good. Am I supposed to be like kind of... You're like this... Campy, yeah. funny element, and, it, and it's kind of... We never really connected, and he kept saying, well, you know, I saw your audition, and I said, right away, you're the one that I wanted, and, and, but he, he never answered me, and so I still don't know... To this day, again, that's when I re- wanted to rely on the director to say, you know what, that's not the right choice. Now I want you to make this adjustment. But you know, so no, right. I, th- I think it was a pitch perfect. I mean, for the tone of the movie, I don't is think it was. See, a that's way the that thing. Yeah, yeah. It. It's it all boils down to the tone of the movie, which is when but you, you don't get know to when you're shooting it with it, with, with the dire- how they're going to edit it for the tone. That's true, right, but right? with the nest, I would argue that. I felt like everybody else in that movie was on the same page except for one person. Yes, right, but right. sometimes that one person is what they're supposed to be like in Ghostbusters is that one person is completely over the top. Right, so you, right. you know, Sometimes it, it works, yeah. sometimes it doesn't. I know, and that's when you really rely on the director because yeah. they're, they're the one making the movie and editing it. Right, right. You know, and but in uh, in the movie, you're you're this very aggressive, kind of bitchy, opportunistic uh, TV reporter. Yeah, like like to die for. That's what right, I thought right. Of, yeah. And the movie is about but then a, that character from the nest was coming into my brain. Yeah. <laughs> but that was more grounded, I think. Whereas this was more yeah, you know, I, because I, the movie I agree. the movie is about a giant fire snake from the sun. They that didn't is know what they were doing people. either. That kind of happens. So, like yeah, they had no yeah. idea too. That was kind of. I had to trust, but, you know, and it yeah, worked yeah. out for Happy Birthday to Me in Class of 1984, but on that one, even afterwards, the producer said, ah, oh, that was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I was not looking forward to seeing that. You got but, to you know, sh- I got to shoot it in my hometown. Oh, oh really? 
And I got to shoot it. We had our lunch and dinner breaks catered in the church where I got married. Wow. What? wow. That was, Jeez, that's cool. That wow. was so great. And you get to shoot fire out of your eyes, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And you cut, know, my, cut a woman my, my mother sees that, and uh, <laughs> my boyfriend sees that a lot, too. And yeah. uh, here's the only thing about that is... The, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the movie. The movie is not acting. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I forgot to take my medication. <laughs> uh, the movie is also executive produced and is a created by credit by William Shatner. He's he apparently. Did you know this? <laughs> oh, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, I'm going to call gets, the producer tomorrow. Yeah. 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 No, you know, you're right. I kind of remember that now. Yeah. I mean, he Did was, he show I up? guess he was the. I guess he was force like, like, behind the, it. Well, no, or the Canadian content, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's true. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It does have that fun stunt casting go too because it's about fires and it has Randolph Mantooth from Emergency in it right. as a fireman, which is kind of cool. Know, they have all these people that they kept saying, they telling me who they were, and, and, and <laughs> unlike all these other movies they had done, where you know, yeah, it's Glenn Ford, but we knew who Glenn Ford was from the right, past. Right. All the, the man tooth. It's like who are <laughs> <laughs> these are the big stars. Now. The man tooth also sounds like a very good <laughs> Roger Corman movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god half sounds, man half two it sounds pretty indigenous to me I mean, we, could, we could go on and on <laughs> yeah let's do talking it talking about Lisa's career no Lisa you, you've just done so much so many things that we really like and, and yeah. you've just we love you absolutely yeah. Yeah. great you thank guys. you yeah. so you're, much you're, you're not leaving <laughs> I, I don't want to leave yeah. like I said I grew up with the four boys yeah. this is so great <laughs> well um, what about like right now like would you like to kind of Talk we, about her. There's or something you like. There's, there's, there, there's a few things. Okay. Want, there's always a few things. All right. <laughs> okay. So one is I've been nominated, not nominated. I'm actually honored, being honored as a uh, single mother for the Single Mo- Mother Planet. Hey. Cool. Right. Awesome. And it's now gone national. This organization. It's an organization that empowers single women, uh, not women, mothers. Um, it, 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 it's also uh, an organization that is showing that there's no longer a stigma attached to being a single mom. Awesome. I mean, I grew up with a single mom, and there was that there was a, a, a you know a divorced mother. She's divorcing. <laughs> right, she's right. from a broken home. Right, right. Yeah. There's something wrong with her. Going to be something wrong with her because she's from a broken home. And so uh, Nefertari Plessy is the founder and uh, the head person. And it's just a wonderful organization. I'm, I'm just so blessed that I found it. Because um, originally I wanted to be an actor because I wanted to, to be able to lend my name to charities. And then I realized that, wait, I can do this one person at a time, you know, whoever comes into my path, I can help them in any way I can with information or people that I know and blah, 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 blah. So there's that. And then I've also been approached by uh, this person I did a, a podcast for who is from uh, New Brunswick in Canada. His name is uh, Gregory Python, and it's germinates from Robin Williams committing suicide, and it's called the Doubtfire Challenge meaning that it's from Mrs. Doubtfire when Mrs. Doubtfire had facial cream all over his, her face. And so you take a pie in the face for uh, suicide prevention and depression. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, one in four people have depression. It's the, the last taboo in society, the D word, nobody talks about it. Or Never- four and four. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and everybody sees depression as a weakness, whereas it, it takes in- incredible strength to just conduct your life uh, suffering from it because really sure. when you have depression unlike a, a, a broken leg you can't see it and depression is like having being a paraplegic in your brain and everybody's asking you to dance and so many so many people suffer from it and go and it goes undiagnosed so uh, this is a challenge that I'm putting out to everybody right now to take a pie in the face for suicide prevention and depression cool. and then also please go to the single mom planet and uh, nominate someone who you think has been a great single mom either in the past or still is because when you empower a single mom you empower the next generation i've actually attended one of the single mom planet events wow is is that where you pick up women (laughs) (laughs) great wait a minute whoa 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 whoa. better than match.com right whoa 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 whoa. (laughs) you pick up women (laughs) uh moving on (laughs) uh our world today uh you were working on this no no, he had something to say no he doesn't have anything to say (laughs) 
No, I have it, something to say. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You did another podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm figuring out what they are, you know. <sighs> um, hurts so deeply. Yeah, and our world today is my new YouTube show that uh, initially I was asked to be a guest on, but the chemistry so, was so great and I had such a riot like I am with you guys that I was oh. asked to be a regular. Hey, nice. <laughs> cool. And... Uh, it's a cross between, uh, it's a YouTube show, and it's a cross between uh, Saturday Night Live and The View. Ooh, cool, um, that's great. And uh, we, we talk about current events and have a good time uh, making fun of them. And we also discuss uh, serious things as well. And I'm inviting you to be on our show. Hey! Absolutely. I would love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yes, because uh, there are two people, the two men on our show uh, could be part of the hardened nerd uh, club. Oh, really? Well. All right. awesome. Okay, all right. Awesome. Get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see just how how, how much yeah. nerd cred they have. <laughs> well, well here, no, here, here's pretty good ner- let, let me tell you, here's pretty good nerd cred. The one guy, and I, re- I really admire him too because he's following his bliss, but he worked in a, a cubicle his whole life for the uh, federal government and the guy next to him at his desk died at his desk oh, and he gosh. thought you know this is time for me to do what I want to do and so <laughs> yes. wow. he decided I'm, I'm, I'm going to go after my dream to become an actor and that's what he's doing that's awesome. He's that's taking great. acting that's awesome. classes. He's going to auditions, and he's in, he he's actually started the show. He's one of the producers, and the other guy who's a hardened nerd. He went to film school, and he too is pursuing his dream to be an actor and a filmmaker, and doing this show as well. Awesome! Right. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, we're gonna look into that. Yeah. Our world yeah. today. YouTube. Our world today. Cool. Check OWT. It out. Awesome. Follow us. And uh, let's take a moment for a listener shout out. A shout out. Shout out. And, uh, this one goes out to Lear Landon of Dahl Amroth. Lear Landon. Oh. Lear? Lear? What? Lear Landon. You we, made that up. Wait, we you've got LL like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I love that name, Lear Landon. We yeah. don't know much about Lear Landon, except uh, he wrote. <laughs> great, great. He, he wrote a wonderful uh, iTunes review that I will read. I would never have found this podcast if it had not been recommended by my English teacher of all people. Oh. Ooh. I watched all the YouTube shows and I'm now making my way through all the podcasts and I already dread when I get to the end of the list. Oh. I'm only 17 years old and these shows really speak to me. <laughs> hey. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Talking to the young kids. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Great Influencing Lear. minds. I understand. King Lear. <laughs> yes. I am King Lear Landon. Yeah. I understand what they're talking about most of the time. I have some movie watching to do now. Though to really catch up, it makes me laugh and at the same time think about what they're saying, and I've already recommended it to multiple fellow sci-fi enthusiasts like myself. I wish you all the success in the world, guys. Hey. Uh, Woo, thank, yeah. you, thank you, Lear. Yeah. yeah, the kids love us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, I uh, want to thank a uh, uh, United Kingdom podcast called Runs and Rivers, which recently... Yes. Gave us a plug on Twitter, uh, recommending us as the podcast of the week to listen to. Wow! Yeah. Thank you. Podcast That's of the nice. week. Runs and Rivers Yay. on the other side of the pond. And let's remind our listeners. Remember when there were movies of the week? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh boy, do we remember. Now you're the podcast of the week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's also remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Monster Party TV. Follow us on Twitter at Monster Party HQ. And please uh, write a review on iTunes. We would love to hear from you. And Absolutely. if you've been hankering for a Monster Party cap, you can buy one now because we have an eBay store. Yeah. What? Wow. What? It's, uh, it's called Monster Party Store. All one word. Cool Easy name. Easy to remember. So check it out. And, and follow us. And, and follow, follow us, us as well, and be the first kid on your block with a us. monster party cap. Cool! Wow! And you've been listening to Monster Party, a presentation of the Fangoria Podcast Network. It's produced by Matt Weinhold and executive produced by Thomas DeFeo and Ken Hanley of Fangoria Entertainment. For press opportunities, advertising inquiries, and information about Monster Party, contact Ken at Fangoria.com. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank yes, you. This thank has been you. a riot. You've been um, awesome. We love you. We thank you so much for just coming and being on this show. Yeah. Just, you know, my, my biggest fear, I got to tell you, is I was afraid to come on the show because I, I thought, these guys have seen all the horror movies and what if they talk about things or movies that I haven't seen or I don't know what they're talking about. That was my biggest fear. <laughs> oh, no. well, well, for this episode, well, you, were the, you were the focus here. I guess we're right? going another hour. <laughs> 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 The human centipede. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, Lisa, no have, you, have you seen Blackfish? No, 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 no. We're not keep no, talking no, about Blackfish. No, no, no. We're, no, we're not. Long story. No. 
<laughs> Good lord. It's a classic horror film. Okay. Obscure. But... This has been great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. It's been thank wonderful. You. And on that note. Thank you, Denise Crosby. <laughs> Ooh, we do thank her. Yes, yes. And, and I we think... can't wait to have Leslie Donaldson. Oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. We, we want all your friends happy. on this show. We want the entire cast of Happy Birthday to me on the show. All awesome. right, well. And uh, Class of 1984. Yes, uh, together. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, yeah. well, some of them won't appear in Class of 1984, but I think Happy Birthday to Me, I can get them. And, awesome. and, you know, it's it's on Class of 1984, it's, it's about the issues that I talked about. Sure. Well, you yeah. Know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa, yeah. we will save that then for another time. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we need a few more false endings. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. This is I, why there's unions. <laughs> I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong. Watch and cast movies with Lisa Lingua. I'll say. <laughs> Keep America strong. Watch and cast movies. With Wait. Lisa Lingua. Oh, you, you want you know you know you do it. You okay, do it. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> First positions. Good lord. Here we go. Keep America strong. Watch and cast Lisa. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Here we go. Here. Quiet on the set. Roll them. <laughs> Lock it up. Keep America strong. Watch and cast movies with Lisa Lingua. I'll say. Hey. Hey. Lisa, that was, that was great. Awesome. Hey.